Bruce Lee, oh wow! Kane, wow, 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 and he was the wow, wow, I'm back, I'm back, the governor's back, stronger, and I'll be back stronger and better than what I ever have done, like, I promise you, I promise you that. I didn't get nicked because I had my arm broken, and uh, although I bit a few people, like, it was it was nasty. He said you'd be walking up the street one day, like, of Ellsbury, you'd be walking up the street there and they'll get you with a crossbow through your throat. I think I was just a hardy fella, like, a hardy boy, like, you know. But I could grab people and bite them at the same time. I said, what are you in here for mugging little women? I said, you're not big boys. Big boys. I said, I'm knocking on now. So what are you like? What can you do? Give the punch. I'm looking at him. I kill you. I kill you. Knife and a caution, all that. Like, and he's looking at me. We went wide. Damn, he's gone like. <laughs> and people were getting killed in the door as well. Doormen were getting shot at work and it was it was crazy. The eighties, everyone. <laughs> they thought it was all over for me. Life has only just begun, like. The governor's coming back! <laughs> You don't need that. It's in your head here, happiness. Happiness is condition of mind, not a result of circumstances. All right, you're in for a treat today. We've got Norman Buckland, friend of Matt Legg. We did one with Matt Legg recently, both in very high regard. Norman, the governor, we've got so many just insane stories of what he's been through in his life and what he has achieved and also at the end you know reflecting on how he helps you wayward use and steers them away from crime so there's the redemption as well at the end uh, so huge thank you for norman for coming on hey! <laughs> who's the governor i'm the governor <laughs> all right and i'm coming out of retirement i'm back in training 12 months I'll be back with my sparring down the governor's gym <laughs> so I've been a bit iffy the last few years but I'm back I'm back the governor's back stronger and I'll be back stronger and better than what I ever have done like I promise you I promise you that before we go back to where you grew up and all that stuff we like to start with one of your hardest hitting stories and I know there was one where you fought four men with a broken arm is, yeah, that, is that a good yeah. one to start with yeah 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 it was uh I won't know, mention no names because I, I, I bit 69 stitches in. I, I'm not trying to humour violence or anything, you know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean, the youngsters and everything, I try and say no, no. But it was the way it was like, you know what I mean? Uh, and I, I got a broken arm straight. I was an idiot. I put my arm up to stop the hockey stick and it, it instead of broken the, the, the hockey stick, one hockey stick did get broken because there's one down like... But um, where, did it, took, where did it get you on the arm? Yeah, it broke, smashed that arm. I didn't. It done a lot of damage to the other one as well. Did it? But mainly across the back, I was being hit and like. Oh. But I could grab people and bite them at the same time. <clears throat> but um, I think I was just a hardy fella, like a hardy boy, like you know. It should have never happened, like you know. What I mean, I was out with one of the boys out, what well, got attacked, and it was. I think it was his his fault, like I think he aggravated them, like. And uh, he, he had it coming from them. But, of course, because they had the hockey sticks, I was trying to take the hockey sticks off them. I had them at one stage. I had the hockey sticks. And I, I was, you know what I mean? And, and the matey boy, a lot of times I get pulled into fights and they think I can take the world out, like, you know what I mean? Because I, I rear up and I scream and everything, like. But I'm only human. I don't like... I don't want to get involved in fights. I want to keep out of fights. But... um. I give them the hockey sticks back, and they carried on like. But it was it was it was the fella's fault. Paul, his name was. He, he should have kept away from it. It was his fight, and and uh, when they started throwing the hockey sticks around, I I started protecting him in that light. And it was firm handed. It, it's the way it went. Like I got my arm broken. Uh, um, thank God, like I could have got nicked seriously. I remember I had to go to court as well because Dean Car Dean Garrity. A mate of mine, scaffold, ex-scaffolder, he got um, 
he got nicked for the night, like, he was with his missus, like, for, he, he stuck up for me, like, I didn't get nicked, because I had my arm broken, and, uh, although I bit a few people, like, it was, it was nasty, but, um, my heart goes out to them and their families, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry I brought it up, like, you know, um, I shouldn't have started, I blame myself for sticking my neck out with someone else, and, uh, God bless them all, like, I hope they can forgive me, like, Someone told me, like, months later, he said, Norman, they, they're not forgotten that. I said, why? I said, what? He said, you'll be walking up the street one day, like, Ellsbury. You'll be walking up the street there, and they'll get you with a crossbow through your throat. And they always, always fucking remember that, like, you know what I mean? That never, and when you bite someone, he put 69, and he's like, they're trying to bite his fingers and everything. I was, t well, he went for my eyes and that. It turned really nasty. I was an ugly fighter sometimes, but the point is you had to fight for your life. And uh, uh, it's, oh, let's get off this one. It's a horrible well, one, one, isn't it? One thing to give you, do you know, I mean, one thing about listening to your interviews is you've got a strong sense of justice and a lot of the situations you get in is because you're protecting people or yeah. they've kind of brought it on themselves. Mm. Where, where did you get that sense of justice from? I think it must have been my dad or... Or my grandmother, I got brought up by my grandmother over in Spain and she'd lived through the First World War and the Second World War. And I was a mummy boy. Well, I was fucking, I loved my mum, I did. <laughs> oh, I loved her, Siobhan, Siobhan O'Sullivan, Siobhan Buckland. And I loved her to pieces. But at six or seven, I got sent to live with my grandmother. I think my dad could see, my dad was like my grandmother. He was a lovely fella, but they were hardy. He was born in the war, like, you know what I mean? And uh, during the war, and they're a hardy people. And because I was gentle natured, like I used to love kissing my mum and cuddling people, I used to fall in love with her. I was gentle natured, so gentle that me and my brother got sent over in Spain. They were splitting up. I was only supposed to go there for two weeks. I ended up like, going there for two years or three years to begin with. <laughs> but sometimes when someone would be from Spain coming back here, they used to drop me at the airport as a kid, as a baby, like a child, and I'd have to find my own way back here, like, although I had the tickets and everything. And it was amazing because I couldn't read or write. <sighs> and that that would be going on for years, like, until I was about 14. I kept coming and going from Spain. And I used to say to my grand, we used to go uptown on the bullfights, the bull runs, me and my brother. I was about seven, he was about eight. And... Uh, they used to let all the sometimes they let six bulls out at once and they'd be running down the street and you'd have to scarper <laughs> at the railings like you know what I mean I or, know. or around you know back of a lamppost or you know it was well beyond that's why I like Philippines now because it reminds me of Spain back in the 60s like and uh, sometimes they'd have fire coming out the horns a big gas can on their back and they'd be tossing people in the air and their pants would be on fire. Oh, and I think that's the way me and my brother, we used to say to my nan, we're going up El Toros to stand up Pueblo. Vamos a jugar con los toros, like. Of course, she couldn't understand it. She was a Londoner, weren't she? But I but And they used to, the Flintianos used to be up the town. They used to speak Flintian. Los bows, los bows, can you use? Los bows. And that was like a Cockney accent, like. So I was right into that, like. And uh, it, the people... People got killed, like, you know what I mean? And uh, we used to say to my grandma, we could, she goes, okay, be back, no, don't be too late. And then we used to we used to get get a lift out of town like, on bicycles or a motorbike. And we used to go to all the little villages where we used to have the ball, but the balls out, and they used to have fire come. And sometimes they used to let a little bull out, and everyone used to get their bottle up and run out. And <laughs> it was terrible, it was cruel, really, mm. but. You get brought up when you're in someone else's country, like when you're in Rome, Rome, you do what the Romans do. Of course. You know, when you go to Africa, you, you respect the Africans. If you go to a country what, what's, what's, uh, what's Muslim, you've got to respect the Muslims, like, you know what I mean? And I was never racist. My, my grandma was never racist, obviously, because they, 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 they were killing all the Jews and gypsies. I mean, she was a, she was a gypsy. Her, her dad was, um, what's her dad now? Um, oh, one of the Coopers, uh, George Cooper or Jack Cooper. The, the family of Coopers, anyway, they're all bare knuckle fighters. And she could see with her, like, she had a punched up face and everything. The jeans are there, like, you know. And uh, they were going for Hitler was going for all, all the gypsies. He would have wiped the world of all the travelers. And I'll give respect to the Fury now, like, you know what I mean? 
um, Fury, what's his name? Fury? Tyson. Tyson Fury. He's not only a credit to the gypsies, he's a credit to the human race, like, you know what I mean? He does whine a bit, like, when he goes to fight someone, he does take the piss, but so did Ali, like, you know what I mean? And Ali, he could go in the ring and take a piss out of the white men, or whatever, be racist, like, and people loved him, we loved him for it. <laughs> you know, no matter what he said or what he done, like, you know what I mean? And it was great, you know, and hopefully now the racism days are over, like. But the grandmother, she she was afraid about the the, the, the Jews, they were wiping out the Jews and wiping out the gypsies. So she told me, son, don't tell the, the family where we come from, but we come, and she used to go back. She got brought up by her grandparents, and her grandparents got poor. So we could go, we were losing hundreds of years, like, you know what I mean? Even in the 17th century, I didn't realise that, a majority of the slaves over in America were Irish, mm. white Irish. Like, I mean, it's it's terrible what they done the 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 the, the blacks, let alone the whites. Like, but we was all prosecuted, we was all persecuted. Like, and 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 before, well, the Irish, the the, the blacks, the the Jews, the it don't matter. Anyone with a bit of money, everyone would turn on or or that's yeah, life, isn't it? When did you start fighting? Then, as a kid. I was, I was fed up beating up beating up by girls, like, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I got levered by a girl over in Southcourt once. and uh, How old? I must have been seven or eight, you know what I mean? And um, I had to learn to fight, you know what I mean? I had to, you know, I was a I was a mummy's boy, like, I didn't know how to fight, you know what I mean? I was, um, but I, it was in my blood, like, I didn't realise it was going to come out until I was about 14. What triggered it then? 14, I think my testosterone was kicking in, like, you know what I mean? And were you this big uh, as well at, at 14? You know? No, I was, um, it was It was a shame, really, because I was such a lovely natured, like, I used to get, and I couldn't read or write. I, I could never read or write. I, I just can't work it out. My nan, <clears throat> she used to get a cereal packet, like, and it'd be grey inside of a cereal packet, and she used to put it down bits at a time, and with blue ink or black ink, she used to write the letters, the alphabet. And I, it, it's something the two I found out years later. It's something I had called scoptopic sensitivity, <laughs> a coloured blindness. And somehow she she would teach me the alphabet. Like I still don't know it, but <laughs> and and she spent a long time. She was good to me. She spent me the manners, the way it used to be, like London and. England, like the way it used to be, like, and you'd never stitch a mate up. You, there's something you wouldn't do, like, stitched up. I've fallen out with a few people. Uh, when I was down, I was in hospital. I was very ill. I don't think I was coming. I shouldn't have come out of hospital, really. But um, a few people went Judas on me, traitors, like, you know what I mean? And I was upset, but I forgive them. You know what I mean? I forgive them, like, you know, it's the way it goes. So as a kid, what did you fantasise about being when you grew up? Do you know, um, people people used to go on about the Lenny McLean and Roy Shaw fight. And uh, I can remember watching that. And I thought, Jesus Christ, I'm getting a lot of, you know, I can't read all right. Like, I was on the doors at an early age, Big Road Pavilion. The bloke who wrote my book said, I can't put that in. He was on the doors at 10. He, I said, well, make a few phone calls. you find out I was. He said, I was, but I can't put that I said, and I was talking to the bloke I work over Windsor now on the door. I've got my license. Can you see that? They give me it back on my 60th birthday. <laughs> they thought it was all over for me. Life has only just begun, like. The governor's coming back. <laughs> and, um, yeah, they give me my license on my 60th birthday. So I'm back on the doors. I'm over the moon with that. I'm just back trained. I was ill for a few years. But I'm back training. It's just my solar plex now, what is burst, but I can train around that. And um I'm over Oxford doing a do doing looking after the markets over there. And um How'd you burst it? I think it's the body shots I used to take. Mm. I mean the pro boxers, especially Matt Leg. I used to wind him up and and, and the YPs and mm. I said on the YP wing, I said, so you big boys, are you? So you can have a fucking row. I said, What are you in here for mugging little women? I said, you're not big boys. Big boys. I said, I'm knocking on now. So what are you like? What can you do? Give us a punch. I said, throw a punch in the belly like. Then bang, bang. And 
people like him professional when he was turn pro and he was fighting people like AJ and, and t- uh, uh, James Tony. I was going, give me light, and he'd hit me. And, and it just wouldn't hurt. They had the pain. I think it was my grandma. She used to beat me senses with a slate skin uh, 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 stick, like when I was when I was a kid, like. But I was pretty good. But because I was a mummy's boy, and I think my old man must have had a word of her, like just toughen the boy up. And uh, every fuck me, I never hardly done anything wrong. She used to beat me, but it never used to hurt. I, just got used to it like that's the way it was and you never got pocket money and you was brought up like you know years in the 18th century or the 17th century uh crazy like you know what i mean so and I, I had a great pain barrier i could take a fucking hide and and just come out of a hide like i'm sure a few times i'd take a beating in the fight and the boys i was fighting with thought it was over like he's fucking dead he's knocked out he's finished but i was Carry on, like, you know what I mean? And they'd be knackered. They'd, they'd be, and that's when I used to beat them back up, like, you know. <laughs> and maybe I enjoyed the hiding. It was crazy. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, um, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, Roy Shaw, I love Roy Shaw him and his family. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, the other big fella, um, um, what's his name? Lenny McLean. Lenny, 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 bless him, like, yeah. But, um, I met as, up with him a few times, yeah. Are you saying then as a young person, you saw these fighters and that's what you aspired to? Yeah, it wasn't. I thought like Ali, like I'd love to be like Ali, Mamad Ali and uh, uh, and uh, Cooper, is it Cooper? Cooper and Joe Bugner and that. But for some reason, it was the, the nitty gritty street. And uh, although my dad had a boxing club, Ellsbury Medicroft Boxing Club, like, and... Um, Peter Garnish from Tame. I liked him. He's, he was a good coach, Peter Garnish. Peter, I love you, like. He was a great coach. And he used to get me the good fights with the tall geezers, like. I was a light heavyweight or heavy, like. And uh, about six foot. And they he used to always pick them tall, like. And I used to get stuck into their bellies. Always used to stop them with body punches, punches. And uh, although I was fighting on the street a lot, um, I was a novice, like. I, I didn't have... I'm, I'd, did have, I don't think I had more than 50 fights. So uh, he put me in for the novices, ABA, like. And I used to box for the home county. Then um, it was my dad, Pete Garnish from Tain. He was great. I love really high up in the ABAs. And if he gave me a fight somewhere, we could travel there for hours, like. If I got there, like, and you look at the other bloke's thing, he said, you're not fighting him. He's 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 like he's, he's somewhere in the ABA or he's someone too special like and he he said no that's it and you wouldn't argue with him you just done what he told he could he you know and he said no he was on the way home he said I'm not having that like you know what I mean he said right I'm going for the ABA and I'm gonna tell him like what they're up to like it was strict that you know my dad's club Pete Garnish even over in Bletchley Wills A.B. Goldsmith I used to box for A.B. Goldsmith it was strict very strict like and sometimes if if I was six six pound over or five pound over and they'd say no we're not having that fight or he's had too many wins or he's had too many losers or anything like that they used to stick me up with a bloke from uh, um, Sandy Club Luton Sock Stewart. Now I've been told Charlie John Charlie Johnson told me <clears throat> he's a part of the gang of the Migs. There used to be a gang from Luton called the Migs. Sun- Sunny Club he used to box for. Sock Stewart. And he must have been about six foot seven, like he was fucking tall. And I must have fought him about a dozen times, like. But he was great. And the last time I see him is when I retired. I see him in the ABAs. He fought Joe Bugner's son. Remember Joe Bugner? He, his son was on the scene. His son was good. But I think Sock Stewart stood his ground with him. But um, oh, he got shot, got killed. The mix killed him. Like A lot of people were dead now. What you know was your I mean? first job? First job? I was on the paddle boats over in Spain. Like You know what I mean? But I used to do the markets on the fruit and, fruit and veg. And I used to go up uh, um, Spitfield Market, like picking the fruit. And that's, I'm sure, is it Ray Hill? Is it Ray? Yeah, we've been to Ray, Ray Hill. Ray. And there used to be this big fella, like, you know, and people used to say, I can't remember the name, but I remember his face. I remember, I can't remember who's putting the fruit on the lorry. But um, I used to look at him, like, because they're saying, that's, that's so-and-so, like. And uh, 
he used to look back at me like, he used to wink or smile like, he didn't know who I was like, you know what I mean? But I, I, I was fascinated by tough, hard men like. But Ray was a lovely fella like, you'd expect him to go, fuck off you little, you know what I mean? Yeah, he still or, is like, a lovely fella, shout out to Ray Hill. Ray Hill, yeah, total respect to you Ray, like, I used to look up to you as a kid like, you didn't know, obviously you didn't know who I was like, I was only a kid going up to London and uh, you was hard. They, they used to, fucking stories they used to tell me about him. Really? A right tough. Can you remember like, anyone? No, he just said he used to beat everyone up. He was, he was, uh, <laughs> he was a tough man, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he, I, he, he'd fight anyone. Mm. He, I think he was at the time in the middle, he wasn't, he, well, uh, he was an old, he, he was, he was must have been about 30 or 40 then. I mean, he must be 80 now. This is must, must, you know what I mean? This is going back 40 or 50 years ago. He must be 80 now. So he must be in his late 20s or 30s, like, you know. But um, I did, he wasn't a bully. To, you know what I mean? I was only a kid, like, I used to watch him, like, you know what I mean? And they used to go around the, 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 the market, like, sizing up to each other, like, <laughs> little body shots and stuff <laughs> like that. And there used to be the pub, the Jack the Ripper on the corner. And around there used to be a little calf, like, you know what I mean? And now and again, the, the the marketers would have a have a punch up, like you know what I mean. It'd be someone knocked out on the floor, and my my me, me uncle Danny, I used to go up there, and my my cousin Chris Doman, he used to take me up there. And when they used to play up, he said, "I've got a young lad from Ellsbury, Norman Buckland," and he said, "You fuck about, like I'll bring him up here, like." But I was only a kid, like I didn't. And then I started meeting these giants, like Ray, Ray, Ray. I see Ray a few times, but Ray was a lovely fella, like, although he was as hard as nails, like, he, he, he'd had a hard upbringing, like, you know what I mean? He was abused. It was like a lot of the YPs in prison. When I, I was there, I was surprised how many how many people were in prison by being abused as kids, like. Oh, and it's, it's, it's the root cause of crime, is child abuse. It, it, it's terrible. Yeah. And you expect, like, you know what I mean? You know, they, they should be pulled aside, like, the fucking... And, and explain to them what they fucking do to kids. You know what I mean? When they do what they do, <clears throat> it's for life. When they abuse children or children or children, it stays in their head for life. It's a little fucking thing stays there. And they end up the rest of their lives being in, in prison or, or being in the fights or... And what they got to do is leave it behind and move on, like, you know what I mean? Or, or it didn't happen, or fuck that, like, you know what I mean? But the, the abusive, like, the, they've got to understand what they fucking do, like. You curse these children for fucking life, and they carry it for the rest of their lives. And it's disgusting, like. And they've got to be told. They've got to be told. You're not going to court just for a child off you're going to court for fucking destroying a child and it's not only a child it's a family like and it never goes away but you, you got to get through to some of these kids and a lot of them are dead now like we've got to get mean? through to the government because the government these people these people get caught and they get slaps on the wrists you got drugs in your house you're going to get swat team raided yeah, 10 20 yeah, years yeah call the cops because a woman's been assaulted or a kid's been assaulted yeah, yeah, please yeah. stop hardly do anything about it no no sickening it, 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 absolutely it's, sickening it's, it's, it's uh and, and 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 some of them like you know they're they're not going to make it on the out like and a, a few of the boys we had one who's called joe knighty matt leg was there as well at the time and the screws called me and they said look norman I said we'll put you on the wings and just keep your eye on them like and there's a few londoners on the other a few old old gangsters larnold one was called like his boy was a good boxer as well and uh, he said, go on then, sort the kids out. They're taxing everyone, like. I said, well, who's taxing who, like? <clears throat> sometimes you'd have a fam firm from uh, Luton. They'd come in, like, and sometimes you'd... All, all over the place, like, you know what I mean? And I thought Corby, they'd come in with a Corby accent. I thought that was Scotland, like. Gillespie was a, a big bloke from Corby, like. Mm. And uh, but he, he used to wear glasses, but he ended up, he's paralyzed now. They put him, they give him such a beat and he's, he's, he, he's mentally, uh, mentally destroyed, like, you know, but um, the, the, you, you, they're getting away with fucking murder, like, you know what I mean? And, and what they do, you, you, you're giving a kid a life sentence. What you do, you're ruining people's families. Think about what you're doing, you bastards. You're destroying life. You're fucking destroying life. A little guy in the prison getting a few months ain't fuck all. 
You should be fucking disgusted. You should be disgraced to the human race. Uh, that's all I can say about I don't know why I hate them so much. Maybe I've tried to help a few kids out and I've not seen them go through because they've ended up killing themselves or being pr prisoned for life. And Ray Hill, like, you know what I mean? And some of the YPs I tried out and out, like, you know what I mean? I could understand why he was inside prison all the time. He had his, his dignity robbed from him, like. And he is a lovely bloke. I love him. To, love you to pieces, Ray. What was your first arrest? Me, fuck it. I was quite innocent, really. I only swang on a fucking bar and the, the shutters come down. Kentish uh, shoe shop, like, you know what I mean? And uh, I got nicked for that, but I was, I was as strong as a lion. But I was I was never, a, I, I never chored, I never taxed anyone. Although I was all the work, I mean, I was working all over the place. But I never taxed, and I was good as gold with the drugs. I never got involved in the drugs. Like steroids, I did for a while, and I regret it. I should. And I'm telling the kids now: don't, don't touch that shit. Don't touch the steroids. I mean, there's other stuff out there. Like there, 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 there's uh, creatine. Like you know what I mean? Stick on the creatine, you get the same effect as that. But you, you won't get the aggressive. You won't want to commit suicide when you come off it. Like. It's all shit, honestly, like, it takes over your life and it, you want to be in the gym training, thinking about yourself and the sex, right? you know, all the rest of your life, like. That's all the steroids do. It's it's disgusting. It's no different than cocaine or speed or blow. You know what I mean? You don't need that. It's in your head here, happiness. Happiness is a condition of mind, not a result of circumstances. I'm a lecturer. I've had it up the arse all my life. I've been shit and pissed and spat out, like, you know what I mean? But I don't carry that on, like, you know what I mean? I love people, like. I show them respect. I'm loyal. I keep my mouth shut, like, you know what I mean? And I do keep my mouth shut. Not at the moment, like, because I'm telling you stories. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, you got to go through life, you know. And I, I had it fucking... I mean, I didn't have my parents around me. I had my grandmother. And... um. When we used to come back to England, I only had my dad. But my dad used to work overtime all the time in New Orleans, New Orleans, where he used to work. So I never used to see my dad. And I, sometimes I'd come back for six months when I was 10 years of age or 11 or 12 or 13, and it was going like that. We had no change of clothes. I mean, a pair of underpants would last six months like without washing them. And uh, we had a dog called Rebel who used to rip our clothes apart like, and fucking bite us. But that was, I suppose that was normal, wasn't it, like? And that you'd have, you'd have next door neighbour's dog coming in your garden and shit in your garden. But that was, that was, that was the 70s, wasn't it? The, you know, that was the 70s. That's Packs the of way dogs running around the streets. Oh, the ice cream man, wasn't ice it, like? Ice cream man, rag and ball man. My brother, no, I can't say. Well, my brother, he's a mason, like. He's right up there with a the mason. So I've got to keep him out of it, like. But I can remember we was all right with breakfast sometimes because someone would go out and nick all the milks off the fucking lines and everything <laughs> like. And I had my mate called Graham Woodley. He used to live up the, the top of the street and a, a, um, Graham Holt used to live down that bottom line. And they were getting funny like because their bills were coming in from the, the milkmen like, and they were adding up like. And he's going, oh, that's rubbish. <laughs> he said, my old man used to kick off. I never had all that milk, didn't have that bread. I didn't order those yogurts because it was... <laughs> Someone I knew, wasn't it? And was chawing all the... Oh, it was terrible, like. And they all felt, you know, all the street. I used to wear clothes out. I used to get nicked off people's lines. I thought they belonged to someone I knew, like my brother <laughs> in the house. So I used to go in his rooms and nick his clothes. And the kids used to chase me down their street. They wanted their trainers back. Or their... their, their... It was that bad. It was that bad. And... Uh, I used, to go, I used to work on the market with my uncle, even at early age of 10, 11, 12. I was one, one, soon as someone was going over to Spain, I'd jump in the car. Like, it wasn't goodbye to my nan, or it, was, it wasn't goodbye to my dad or my mum. It was just jump in the car, get your passport, and you'd be off. There's no kisses or hugs or, or anything like that. And uh, my mum, bless her, like, she, she come from a hardy Irish family, like O'Sullivan's. And uh, they, they, the Irish have suffered a lot of their lives, like over in Ireland, the famine, and the, the, the British. You know what I mean? They, they, they were pretty awful to the Irish as well. Potato God bless famine, their yeah. souls. Yeah. I love you, Irish. You cork people. I'm one of you. All right. Are you friend of Big Joe Egan? I love Joe Egan. Yeah. He's a lovely, Shout out to Big Joe. Guy. Big Joe. 
Fucking love you! The governor! Check his book out as well, Big Joe Egan, toughest white man on the planet. <laughs> yeah, he 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 reminded me of uh, of uh, um oh the big fella. What's his name now? The governor. Lenny McLean. Mm. I always called Lenny the governor, like, you know what I mean? Uh, Roy Shaw was the governor as well, like, you know what I mean? But that's from a kid, like, I've always called him the governor, like, you know what I mean? That's why I always, uh, uh, Lenny, I always get, I mean, I, it's, let, governor comes first before Lenny McLean, like. And uh, he used to, uh, Joe Higgins used to remind me of Lenny McLean because he's so big, you know what I mean? And he moves about, like, he's so strong, like, you know? And, uh, and he's such a lovely fella as well. Such a gentleman. And, you know, you can understand him, like, you know what I mean? Taking a few people out in a fight because he's so big. And he was a great amateur boxer as well, like. I think he's three or four times Irish champion, you know. And Matt loves him, but everyone loves Joe Higgins, like. He's a lovable, he's a lovable person. He's a big giant. And he's been there. He, he sparred with Tyson, uh, Mike Tyson. He, he, he's been there and he, he's... He's been all over the world, like, and he's seen it all, and he's been involved. And uh, there should be a film out about him, really, like. And Joey Pohl, uh, the old man Joey Pohl, and my favourite, my favourite's, um, who's my favourite? The old, the godfather. Lenny McLean. No. Um, Freddie, Freddie, Fo Foreman. Freddie Foreman, Freddie Foreman. Freddie Foreman, Freddie. I love Freddie. I could yeah. just sit there and listen to him for hours, like. And he reminds me of my grandmother, like. And you could see the tears in his eyes sometimes, like. He, 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 his four brothers went out the war, like, was in the army, like. And a ship went down and his brother was on it, like. And that was it. That was the end of his brother. Then a few weeks later, his brother would come back, you know what I mean? Mm. He was one of the survivors out of it, like. It must have been terrible for them, like. And you can understand... You know, like my grandmother, how she used to beat me sense with a snake in, but that was just the way they were. They were just tough people, like, you know what I mean? She went, go to play with the bulls, like, people are getting killed. I'll come back later, I'll have your tea ready. And that that was that was part of life. People were getting missing. <laughs> my dad was a good fighter as well, Alfie Buckland. He was great. He was only five foot four, like. But he used to knock people out too quick. And when we used to do that, we even had him with Sunrise, Back to the Future, Elder Skelter. And um, we used to be working all over the country. And sometimes we used to go into London. They were so secretive, Tony Hater. <clears throat> it was so secretive for my brother about where we was working. We wouldn't know until the last minute. So we're up somewhere all over London, all everywhere in London, like, you know what I mean? And uh, they said, right, we're on someone's land. To, uh, you know, we we're on. But they used to just have the paperwork with someone's manor or house or, or factory or something like. And when the police would come, they'd have all the paperwork. <laughs> and uh, uh, police would come, like. And at one stage, it was, um, they come, the inner city, isn't it? Like, all the old, uh, all the old, uh, the, the, the soldiers, isn't it? They call them like the soldiers, foot soldiers, and all that, like, you know. Is this the Andrew Pritchard era? It's, it's all, all football things, yeah. Football, I mean, they, they used to work with Sunrise, um, and a few of them had books out, and I didn't realize they, they actually they were there at the raves, like, you know what I mean? This wasn't Sunrise, Andrew Pritchard, he worked with them, right? he worked with them, and um, Carlton Leach, he, he was a Carlton Leach. Yeah. I, yeah. Colt was lovely. I know, I know Colt and like, mm. and the, you know, it, it was all those boys, like, you know what I mean? And they'd had books out. I thought, I, I, was, I used to say I didn't see them, but they were there. They were there. And and Cass, the big, the yeah, he he used to have glasses on, like, you know what I mean? I used to see him like with his glass. I was in the, one of your films. Was I in a film? Yeah, with with uh, Alex Reed. Uh, um, Alex was a nice fella. We've had Alex on two or yeah. three times now. He, he's, yeah, he's, he's lovely. Uh, they, they love him, like people love yeah. him, like you know what I mean. Uh, he is a nice fella. Did you fight Alex? Uh, we had a little tear up down the bottom there, yeah. But he he did have me in a locker once. I give him credit, like, and I had trouble getting out of it, like. So, you know what I mean? I, he, he and um, I was telling him to throw the blows properly, hard, like. And do the kicks hard, but um, total respect to him. Like he, he's a lovely fella, and uh, you can't underestimate him. He, he's he he always used to say sir. So now when I see people, I call him sir, <laughs> and I thought that's that's Alex Reed, like because I was so impressed with him, like yeah. you know what I mean. 
I mean, they go on about cross-dressing, but I mean, half the, half the people in the country cross-dressing. <laughs> so you can't, you know what I mean? You can't yeah. knock him. And he was in the army, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was he was a tough, right, right hard fella, like, you know what I mean? But a bunch of women what said to me, like, my old man cross And I said, you're joking, they're mates of mine. And I've never told them, like, and I'm thinking, well... You know what I mean? What they do in secret, if it's their business. Yeah, they're like, not harming anyone. He's got, no, they're not harming anyone. I, I think it's a common thing. I, I couldn't even get my wife's knickers over my head, I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> I got, <laughs> I got, I, I, <laughs> I got this stinky pair of tights once. I had to go, I used to go out and you'd have to frighten people, like, you know what I mean? So you'd have to be, and people would know me, like, locally, like, around Buckingham, sharing that, like, around the county they, they did know me like around the country like and i had this shitty pair of fucking stockings out of, out of the dustbin i got and i got there like and i knew what i had to say and this that and the other like i've jumped out with i didn't have it wasn't loaded didn't didn't have the real bullets in it a sawn off 12 boys to shout and just fucking and i i think this woman had these tights must have shit these tights uh, it stunk uh, Oh, and the Jack and Danny, you can sniff the Jack and Danny as well. And I'm shouting at these, hey, if you come back, if you fucking come back to whatever his name, Johnny's house, you'll get it. Yeah, boom, boom, you'll get it. And I'll be breathing off of, this is Jack and Danny. And, 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 and fucking, oh, this, this stench was terrible, like. And I had it at one stage, someone saying, is that you, Norman? <laughs> no, it's not me. And they fucking recognise my voice. <laughs> but that's the sort of things we used to do. <laughs> oh, it was crazy, like you know what I mean. And I had this pair, of, and someone put on they, they put on the thing when I was saying about Alex Reed. They said you're saying about, but you put a pair of your wife's knickers and a stocking over my head. I said that was for a blag. I had the stocking over my head. And I had to do that for a while, but people started knowing my voice. Well, they could see it was me, couldn't mm. they? And you'd have the other stocking hanging there. And another bloke oh, I love the pieces, like, is uh, Buller. Buller. Buller, Buller, the film, Buller. Mm -mm. Do you ever see the film, The Governor, Ricky Buller? Grover. Ricky Grover. Yeah. No, nah, that'd take me head off to him, like. I was more like him, like. And I, I could joke about things and see the funny side. Although, like... Towards the end, it was getting out of control. The, the Sunrise and uh, Back to the Future, Outer Scouter, uh, the drug dealers are heavily into that. It, people were getting shot. I had one bloke taken up the woods and shot. Uh, um, I think it's, oh, I loved in the pieces. He reached out to me. I should have took him with me, Steve Francis. But it was just as dangerous on the scene I was on, like, you know what I mean? He was a dangerous boy, like. And I'll never forget him, like, because after him, I met Matt Legg, like, he, he reached out to me. And I, I trained Matt Legg as a in prison, like, bare knuckle fighter. And he was a bare knuckle fighter. And uh, he turned pro and he fought AJ. AJ beat him. But he fuck, he tore into AJ. One of them was going to go down in the first round. And I thought it was going to be AJ. But, um, you know, AJ was wild. He was really wild at the time. Like He's, he's knocking everyone out in the first round. And um, Matt Legg could have taken him out. Like, But then he went on to fight Tony, uh, um, James Tony, what was five times world champion. James Tony was never knocked out. He was a tough fella, James Tony. Five times, five different from from lightweight all the way up to heavyweight. And he fought the bloke um, who had his ear bitten off by Tyson. Holyfield. 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 And he beat, uh, Holyfield beat Tyson. And after that fight, a little while, then uh, he fought um, Matt Legg, yeah. And Matt Legg done well. He done really well. He was fighting all, all the top, Top top heavyweights in Britain as an amateur, like he won the, <clears throat> all his fights. He, he won the novice ABA after a few fights. Then he fought for the ABA. I think he got to the finals. He just lost the the fight. The bloke who beat him lost to um, Paul Joyce. I think it was. Is it Paul Joyce? The big traveller, bare knuckle fighter, like. But Matt Legg beat Ball Joyce, like, so it was, it was very close there, like. But he would come out, he'd, he'd travel anywhere, he'd fight anyone, like, on the street or in the ring, like. But he was a lovely boy. But just like Steve Francis, he had that thing in him, like, where that aggression, you just could see it, like, and something had to knock him back. And that's what I'd give him the stories about, uh, um, you know what I mean? We had to go up and rescue someone, like.
when we wake up in the morning, we get out of bed, and we start our day with Koro Snacks. Koro is a healthy snacks brand focusing on bringing additive-free natural ingredients to their customers with fair prices in bulk packaging. They have everything from nut butters to free from baking ingredients to cooking essentials and, of course, the snacks. And the energy balls are delicious. Oh, they're my favourite, the salted pistachio. Ooh. Um, can't wait to have this this morning. Let's see what this one tastes like. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. So what makes Coro special in comparison to others? Their bulk packaging allow them to offer their customers high quality products at a fair price. For a 5% discount on Coro's products, use the code TRUECRIME with no space in between true and crime. The link to Coro's online shop is in the description box on YouTube. Thanks for supporting our sponsor. He was in hospital up London. Like He'd he done a rave uh, um, house party over the Christmas with, with, with Sunrise. We should have been there like to... Uh, to do the party, but they thought they could do it without us, like, you know, just see his ex, you know what I mean? But that's Cowboy was hanging about with these, the uh, big bodybuilders. I think they were, um, they were all juiced up. I don't know what they were on, like steroids and uh, all the other, you know, E's and Coke and everything. And things started getting stupid and they started pulling guns out and they just, it just went mad in the 80s, just went crazy. Anyway, they, they beat this fella up, like, Neil. We had to go to hospital, like, it was a firm of us. I remember Chalky White, I think Chalky White was with me. With me. I know I know uh, um, Kevin Wilson from Milton Kings, the big boy from Milton He was the big boy as well, like, he didn't care. I used to do the door with him all the time. I used to try and slow him down because his temper was terrible. Worse than mine, he was. Um, Mark Marsh, I'd done time with Mark Marsh. I was inside with Mark Marsh. Stephen Wilson was there. You could go, you know what I mean? You could talk to these blokes anytime. Everyone knows Mark Marsh and I hope he's out now. He 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 got 10 years at one stage, but he got set up uh, an armed robbery like that someone tipped the police off. It wasn't even a real gun. And uh, they, 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 they got him like, and he had 10 years. And I think that ruined him like, you know what I mean? Silly, like he, he admitted he was silly. So when he come out, he come to work for Sunrise and my brother and me like, and um, it was those three: Mark Marsh, uh, Stephen Wilson, Kevin Wilson, uh, uh, Stephen Wilson, Kevin Wilson, and a fella called Chalky White. I didn't agree. He used to pull a blade out a lot, but he did used to frighten the fuck out of people, and he did used to use it as well. But things are wild. That's what I mean. It it was crazy. Like we had to go up to London and see Neil. He's in hospital. He was beaten up, tortured. He, he was in a right mess. Like. And his eyes, like, he'd fucking mad. They'd only raped him as well, like. Uh, they'd oh. raped him. Yeah, yeah, fucking. They're, this is how disgusting it was getting in the 80s. Could I, I used to talk to uh, <clears throat> Freddie Foreman. He used to tell me about the days of the crazy there. I love Freddie Foreman. He's a lovely fella. And uh, I said, I said, Freddie, it's changed. He says, I know it's changed. And I could never tell him the story. These stories I've never told before, like, but this is what used to go on. This is what I used to tell the YPs, like, yeah, it's changed. In the, in the late 80s, it did change. There are people, people committing suicide, getting shot, fucking thrown off bridges, and it, it was uh, it was just out of hand, like. And I regret, I was amongst, I was amongst the boys, like, maybe I was a leader in a way. I was always at the front of the door, like, um... Thank God I didn't kill anyone. It was going that way. Thank God I got put away, and uh, I got five away. It was ten years. There was it, five and five combined, so I ended up doing five out of ten, and uh, probably three out of five. So it wasn't that bad. But um, I learned anger and management, and the beast, the anger, what was in me. I learned to leave, leave behind in prison. And this is what I tried to get over to the YPs, like you know what I mean. It's not getting out and being a glamorous gangster, like, not not in the 80s. It, it all changed, like, you know, if you were sexually abused as a child, you was going to get sexually abused as an adult because some of these people didn't care. They didn't, and, and raping, like, fucking doormen and stuff like that. I mean, that was a message we got put over. This is what they wanted us to see. This is what was going to happen to us. You know what I mean? Oh, no, not me, mate. You know what I mean? 
No, 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 it's, it's getting out of hand, mate. So I used to call, I used to carry a sawn off, and they were pissed off from Manchester, the McPhee's, to, and, 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 uh, uh, and uh, his brother was really pissed off at me as well, and they threatened to kill me as well. And uh, I was getting it from all over the place, like. So I uh, stupid bastard I was. I used to carry a sawn off twelve bore around, and it was stupid of me. And uh, it's stupid to, to, to talk about it in front of kids or youngsters. There's nothing big about that, like you know what I mean. It's wrong. It's fucking wrong. But I was in with the wrong lot, and. That's the way it went. I ended up doing prison. But I didn't turn out a nasty person. I'd help them, like, you know what I mean? In prison, even now, like, you know what I mean? People come to me and I try and talk to them, like, you know what I mean? Happiness is a condition of mine, not a result of circumstances. And uh, I used to suffer with depression, but I don't suffer it now. I've got a lovely wife from Philippines, like, and since I've been with her, like, I've, I've learned happiness. And that depression, once that goes, you wouldn't think after, I'm 60 now, you wouldn't think after all those years, as an older person, I could be happy. But now I've got no stress there. It's beautiful. Life is beautiful. That's great. And the stories, and where I, all I can do is tell the stories now. But I swear to God, every weekend, even every day, it was, it was a chore. It was out with the boys, on the raves, looking after... Uh, Groups, uh, um, bloody uh, um, all the groups. Every group was every group was was there. Like we used to... how did it start, Norman? Because you did forty five years on the doors. How did you yeah. start onto the doors? Well, it's fifty actually. Like, fifty now is it? Well, it was. I don't talk. I'd say fourteen full time when I was on the doors. Yeah, but I was I was on Bedgrove uh, Bedgrove Pavilion. I was talking to the bloke I work with now, like. My dad used to do a Friday disco in the Bedgrove Pavilion. And um, he comes from Bedgrove and the pavilion's still there. And some of the boys can remember. Because I was, it's just that I had a dad that was very handy, like. So he's bringing me up. He's, I mean, I, I didn't even call him dad. His name was Alf. And my mum was Siobhan. And that's the way we got brought up, Alf and Siobhan. And uh, I used to work for Alf on a Friday night with my brother, another Alfie. And my granddad was Alfie, Alfie James Buckland. They're all Alfie James Buckland. And I've got a son I named after my dad and my granddad and my brother, <laughs> Alfie James Buckland. Yeah. He gets confused when he goes up the graveyard because he said there's so many Alfie James Bucklands. <laughs> and uh, it come back with uh, the East Enders. Uh, um, when the East Enders come out, they, it come back the name Alfie, Alfie. Alfie, what was that bloke called Alfie? Alfie something, weren't there? East Enders. East Enders. Alfie Moon, that's it. When Alfie Moon come back, everyone started nicking the name Alfie again. So, uh, um, and my, my, uh, my, one of my daughters called Siobhan after my mum's. Mm. Siobhan, Siobhan, yeah, oh, bless. It's like, a lovely name, Siobhan. Yeah, yeah, it's the old girl. So, although they weren't there with me for a child, mm. I mean, someone's looking after me now, like, and I think they've been with the. They, she wasn't much of a mother during life, like, you know what I mean? I loved her to pieces. Loved my dad to pieces. I was ever so loyal. I've always been loyal to people, like. I've always been, you know what I mean? I've always loved people. I've always been loyal to people. And um, since she's been dead, she's been more of a mum, like. You know, you know what I mean? She's she's always about, like, you know what I mean? The net now, like, she's got, she calls me a big baby. I said, why do you call me a big baby? She said, oh, you are my big baby. I said, that's what my mum used to call, you know what I mean? So it's sort of come around, you know, because your parents are dying or they're dead or they're on their deathbed doesn't mean they've left you like, you know what I mean? You know, we don't know what goes on the other side. We're forbidden. But, you know, if the spirits can get through to us and give us a few tips, they will. And with me, I've been lucky they have, like, you know. What was the first door you worked on? Yeah, that was Bedgrove Pavilion. Like. Okay. Yeah. But Bucks that Bucks now go. When I was 14, that was full time. Mm -hmm. I was there. And I used to do the under 18s disco with I was under 18s <laughs> up uh Ellsbury. That was Civic Centre. <clears throat> then it was um we oh Civic Centre was alive in its day, Ellsbury. We used to have uh, madness there, bad manners, the damned, um Susie. Susie and the Quad. We used to have everyone at the Civic Centre. And Dave Williams used to get me on the door there because I used to box down the club light. He used to get me on the door and he's going, look, you know, they had Bow Wow Wow there one night 
And he's going, don't let the big boys up because they come up and smash the changing rooms mm. up. And I remember the girl off Bow Wow Wow, she must have been only about 15. She was beautiful, like, you know. And these big heavies come up, like. I said, lads, you can't come up here, like. I said, what do you keep smashing up the room for, like, you know. And then I was brought into it from a kid, like. And, uh, oh, we had, everyone was there. Uh, um, the Piranhas, Bow Wow Wow, uh, the Stones. All the groups all over the world were at the city. Unbelievable Ellsbury is like. You'd go, you go up Kingsbury Square and they'd, they'd have the, um, what would they have? The, the, the Red Lion was all the mods in that pub. And then you'd have the, the Punk Rock pub, the Green, oh, the Lobster Pot, was it? No, no. There was um, the Bikers pub. They had a Bikers pub there as well. They they had a uh, um, Britannia was uh, Rockabillies and Teddy Boys. The Nags Heads was Skinheads. The um, the Green Man was Punk Rockers. That's it. The Red Lime was uh, um, fuck off oh, Mods. That was the Mods. And there'd be different pubs for different. So when they'd have a show on a Saturday night, the the, the Saturday I used to be working on the market doing the fruit and veg. And there'd be all skinheads up there going to watch Sham 69. <laughs> then there'd be uh, all punk rocks going to watch uh, whatever her name was like. Uh, um, Adam Ants was there and all that. Everyone was there. Like Then another night, there'd be like another day, there'd be thousands of skinheads or punk rockers or teddy boys or rockabilly boys. I like the rockabilly. They was good, didn't they? The stray cats and everything they had out. They, they, the Ellsby was the place, like, you know? Did you like Ian Jory? Oh, he was great. Yeah, he was there, Ian Jory, in the Blockheads, like. He was fantastic, bless him. He had some good songs out, yeah. The first single I ever bought was Holidays in the Sun, Sex Pistols. Sex Pistols. Yeah. Mine was the Monster Mash. The Mash, the Monster the Mash. The Monster Mash, remember that? <laughs> That's the first, And I took it home, and I couldn't find it again. <laughs> and my dad said, I had some friends home, some girlfriends, like, he said, I... They picked it up and took it home with Pilfered them. It. And that's that's the way I learned, like, you know what I mean? If you don't look after something properly, like, it's just going to get given away, you know? Um, but I was mad about Slade. I took I took Nanette to see Slade the other, the other Christmas. I love Slade. I don't know why, mm. but um, that kept me going through. That's uh, it's kept me going through the 70s, like, you know? Slade was fantastic. What was life like for you in your 20s? 20s, I used to suffer with depression, but I was getting handy then. Like, I was getting really handy. 25, Jesus Christ, I'd fight anyone. Like, it, it, it really didn't. But I can say that now. I mean, I'm 60 now, but I can honestly say when I was 25, I would have fought anyone in the country, anyone in the world. I could have took, gone blow to blows of body punches with anyone, like, you know what I mean? And not even bothered about it, like, you know. But that was then, like, you know what I mean? That's not now. And, uh, I could have taken it better places. Like, um, that's when I should have been with uh, the crowd from London, Joey Pole's lot. You know what I mean? Because I've, well, they, they would have to get for people like um, uh, um, um, the big fella. What's his name now? Sugar Bean. Sugar Bean? Was it Sugar, Sugar Bean, Bean, the big boxer? Four rounder, the king of the four rounders. There was Sugar, Kimbo Slice. Kimbo. That's I would have, I love Kimbo Slice. Even when I, I was I was up there fighting up London for uh, Joey Paul, I was I was in my late forties then, like, and I had, I had trouble with my chest then, and I kept going to the doctors, like, and they sent me down the hospital, and they said you've been shot. I said no. They said but there's lead in your chest, like, and I'd been shot, and I still got the lead in my chest now. I should have had it out, but um, my granddad died when he was fifty four. A uh, heart attack. It was uh, all the things blocked, the arteries blocked and everything. So when I was fighting with Joey Pohl, I was more of a street fighter. And I, I loved the entertaining. Prize fighting to me was fighting. Prize fighting. You didn't have to go in there like a boxer. And they did have professional, ex-professional boxers, top ex-professional boxers there. And some of the boys were journeymen. And a journeyman was a good boy. It, it didn't matter if he won or lost. You know what I mean? And some journeymen, they'd knock some good pros out as well, like they'd knock some good prize fighters out. So, uh, but I said to Joe, can I have some, you know what I mean? Like uh, uh, Kimbo Slice and, and, and uh, 
and uh, he's going, no, you, you get what you're given, like, and that's it, like. And uh, one was Dave, I suppose, like, blessing my mate Dave Courtney. But um, I said, yeah, yeah. They, they said, would I take a dive? And I, I couldn't take a dive. And I think they knew it as well. But I'd, I'd, I would have tried for Dave because I love Dave, like, you know uh, what I mean? How did you meet Dave? I've known him for years. Like, he, he's always... Do you know, but what they got into, like the drugs and what, well, I shouldn't say, but what they got into, they never took me, like even young Joey Paul, never got me involved in, in the dirty stuff, like, you know what I mean? And I respect them for that. I ain't got a bad word to say about them. I mean, when the old man Joey Paul died, the, the, the London world collapsed, like it was over, like it was all over and it was coming away at the scenes and, uh, I had to get away. I had to get away from it. Like I think I went up north for work up north, or I joined up with um, Spartan. Is it Spartan? And I'll give a belt out to a, 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 what was a. I remember him, a young lad who used to get up London books, blue eyes, tough as now, as 13 and a half stone he was. And he would fight anyone, any way, anyone. And um, he, he, he was brilliant. Gary Furby, that was it. Gary Furby. Furby, like. yeah, we've had him on as well. Gary Furby. What a lovely fella, you know. Shout out to Gary Furby. Gary Furby! My man. What about Paul Sykes, speaking of Northerners? Paul, he was down there. He, he had a night down there at um, Caesar's Palace. <clears throat> he was down there. But I didn't like, I, I always had a seat with the VIPs. But I never thought I was special enough. They, I mean, Freddie Foreman would be up there, like, you know what I mean? Lam Bronos, Dave Courtney and that. And I didn't feel like I deserved to sit with them, like, because they, they were top celebrities, like, you know what I mean? The books made about them. Although I was a fighter, I never put myself in their class. So a lot of the times I was just sit down in the crowd amongst everyone else. Now and again, they used to pull me out of the crowd, like, you could tell I always had a suit on and a, and a bit of Tom, like, you know, I was a character. But um, I never thought there'd be a book out or anything about, you know what I mean? And I was already the governor on the street. They knew I was the governor on the street. They all fucking knew I was the governor. I'm the governor! I'm the governor! I'm the fucking governor! And I've always been the governor on the street. But along come my old mate. Um, oh, dear. What's his name? Roy Shaw. Roy Shaw. And he's, he said, I'll give you my belt out, mate. He said, I'll give you a belt out. If you, if you if you fight, they wanted to dust up on a few things. I think there was a few governors about, and they 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 wanted it back in London. And I always say like, uh, uh, the, his belt is the London belt, but it was going to to Wales, it's going up Scotland, it was going up north, it was going all over the place. It was a London belt, and it belonged to London. And I've still got the belt now. Roy Shaw give me like you know, and no one else. Joey Powell that didn't give me that. Roy Shaw give me that. Okay, let's get this straight now, boys. Okay, and I'm pissed off with some of you haters. What we'll send messages along like you got anything to say? You say it to my fucking face. You can come around my house. You can knock at my door. You can come around my ring. I won't be boxing till the summer now because I still need another operation. Like I might be sixty, like, but you know, I feel sorry for some of you haters. Like, you know what I mean? Because I've, I've tried to listen to you, like, and one or two of them, like, are a bit suicidal, like, you know. But when you when you talk with them, like, they've they've got crimes against them. Well, one I was talking to him, he had crimes against him, and, and it was a sexual crime. And I thought, fuck yeah, fuck off, mate. And I thought, how can you fucking, how can you, how can you even talk? That's why I won't talk to any haters, like, you know what I mean? Everyone got haters, like, I love everyone, so I don't care. But if you try to reason with them, like, and some of, some of them are stinky, filthy, dirty, dirty. And it's a shame, you know what I mean? It's a shame. So, you know, if anyone's got anything to say, if they want to go down the ring with me, you're welcome, like, you know what I mean? Matt will be come down in the summer, like. My, my son, uh, Brandon Buster Buckland, he's he's a good boxer. He's, he's, he keeps coming down here in the mornings and training down the ring, like, on the punch bag and that. I can hear him, like, you know. But I can't, I can't, I've still got another operation. I'll be out of action for about 12 months. But uh, I'll be back. The governor will be back better and stronger than ever. I'm the governor! Remember this! Who the fucking governor is, like. I'm the fucking governor, okay. Lenny McLean was 
he was special. I could never live up to Lenin Klein or Roy Shaw. You know, there was Paul Sykes and there was uh, um, the, the Light and Buzzard. What were you Cliff saying about Fields. Sykes at Caesars? Yeah, he was at Caesars, like, yeah. What yeah. happened there? No, he was just there for a night out. Mm. He was there for a night out. But he was, um, I mean, people have a pop at him about in prison. Like, I think he shared his cell with uh, a couple of times with uh, um, Purple something. Pur oh, Purple, Purple Aki. Purple Aki, but... Did you bump into Aki in the system? No. <laughs> uh, do you want to measure my muscles? <laughs> no. <laughs> Apparently he's very intelligent, you know? He does a lot of legal stuff for the prisoners. That's why he gets a pass on things. Yeah, no. Apparently he's very, very intelligent, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's taken in the court, the police at times, and saying, well, i never done nothing sexual, but they've not actually got him for anything sexual. So he got a lot of his crimes... And he, he sued the police at one stage, but he was, he did used to, he used to follow people about, stalk people. He used to um, come and feel my friend's muscles in my hometown when I was a kid. <laughs> and they'd, they'd uh, squat him and stuff. Yeah, on top of his, yeah, he got, yeah, he got, on top of his he, neck. He got, he got banned from my hometown. This was in, like, I think 1991, something like that. I went to America for 16, 17 years. Come, Whereabouts? Where um, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Come back. Front page of my news, Witness Weekly News. He's, he's on. He's on it. He's still feeling muscles. I know. All those years, and he, he got the ban overturned for race, yeah, yeah, racism. Yeah, no. Yeah. Apparently, he's, he's extremely intelligent, right? But he does stalk people. There was one yeah. fella went on holiday to get away from him because he was mm. stalking him. Mm. And he said, the next thing he, he he caught a plane and went on holiday with him. Like he was. Uh, <sighs> Terrible stalker, and someone went to hide under a train. God bless his soul, light, and got run over by the train. Mm -hmm. But um, someone, I, I, I can't work him out, Purple Ackley, at all, light. I think I'd rather, people like that, I'd rather just keep away from, light, you know. God bless him, light, you know. I, I can't work him out, but he does stalk people, and he's a big, intimidating man, light. It's just like the stories I told you. About some of the boys at the roads getting kidnapped and raped, and and you, you don't imagine it goes on, but it does go on. Like, I mean, this boy walks; he can still walk around Liverpool, and no one says anything to him. How come he can walk around Liverpool when he stalks people and uh, and pesters people and that? Like, you know what I mean? It's on, but but it does go on like the raves. They got him recently. They shot fireworks at his head. Yeah, I see. And, and he didn't, yeah, he, he, he didn't, no, he didn't he, even blink. He was he doing, doing, he was doing martial arts, wasn't he? You see that? Bruce Lee, oh, wow! Kane, wow, 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 wow. And he was the wow, 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 A rocket, a rocket hit his head and fizzed yeah. off his head. He didn't even no. blink. He didn't even blink. <laughs> he was like King Kong on top of the Eiffel Tower, on top of the tower, and, and, the, and the Spitfire's coming down. <laughs> I'm all like, oh, oh, oh. I thought, fucking him. Yeah, someone could have been shooting him with bullets and he would have been trying to do his, his things like. He, if they can get him and sort his head out and put him on something like, take him off the street, because he, apparently he's very intelligent like. I don't agree what he's done in the past like, you know what I mean? But it's all been white, white. He, he's taking the police to everyone, the court. And won his case, like so. Obviously, he's very intelligent, like there there'd be a spot out there for him somewhere where he can just concentrate on what he does, like. Well, in, what, in Walton Prison, they said to him, "Are you gay?" He says, "No, I'm not gay." He said, "They say, well, why don't you just get a job as a masseuse?" Yeah, and then you can feel people's muscles. You don't yeah. have to stalk yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's what I mean. You know that. When when I'd be in prison, it don't matter if the kid was doing life like a YP, like was doing life or he's in for DD, I wouldn't treat him no different like because like the the end of the day I'm in there doing bird, they're in there doing bird like one's gonna gonna have it hard, he's gonna end up doing life. We had one boy would come in, he 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 went into a um a shop uh, um what is it now? A, a shop where you get your passports done and what are they call post it office. Now? A post office like and he robbed it, and on the way out, he opened the door, and he turned around and shot the girl in the head, oh, blew no, her head off, no. like you know. And he was—I don't think he was. It's probably still away now, like. Oh. And but the point is, what he done was wrong. But what we all done in prison was wrong. But the point is, I can only tell him what what's coming up, like you know what I mean. What he's looking at, like, and uh, 
I used to tell him, yeah, I used to be good as gold with them, like, you know what I mean? And uh, I'd, I'd had it hard as a kid, but because I had it hard, I never dished it out on anyone, like, I was never a bully, and I can tell that to anyone here, like, I didn't bully people. I used to love people and help them. Of course, I used to give the governor all the, who's the governor? When I used to get in the ring, like, but that was just to draw people in the ring. That was just for fights. And when I was there, I would fight. I had to fight anyone. My, I had one bloke in the crowd chat and I jumped out and knocked him out. But it was, <laughs> that was, he's supposed to come in the ring and fucking offer the fight me, like, not outside, like, you know. But um, it's like now I don't gamble, I don't drink. I, I, I don't smoke, I don't take drugs, like, I'm happy with the natural gift is my wife in life, I'm happy with her, like, you know what I mean, and all I can say with these kids what are going through it hard, do the best you can, try and do the best you can, like, if your mum and dad's dead, like, or you're close, your brother or sister, they'll contact you, you know, they're spirits, but somehow they'll contact you. They'll let you know. They'll try and guide you the right way. You know, just fill out their light. Don't give up on nothing, like, you know what I mean? Mm. And happiness can come at a late age, even at 60, like, you know what I mean? And I'm more concerned and I'm more happier now than what I ever have been all my life, you know what I mean? What about in your 30s then? You've talked about your 20s. What about in your 30s? How was you? It started to be downhill a little bit. I mean, up to my 20s, uh, uh, 20s, I was I was at my peak at twenty five, like, and I was still I could still fight anyone in the ring. Well, even when I was fifty, like, fifty five, I'd spar with anyone down the bottom, like, you know what I mean. But when I was getting older, like, instead of going out and and making a big thing about it, I used to tell them to come down the uh, down the ring down the bottom there, like, great big twenty three foot ring, like. I mean, a lot of the lot of gypsies come down. They were tough boys, like. Um, Paddy Duran, he brought his boys down once. One was about 15. And he'd been to my fight, fight at Caesar's Palace. And I thought, I think I fought AJ. But I spoke to AJ before I fought him, like. And he said, you won't jump all over my head. I said, no. I said, well, what? I said, listen, mate. If you come in here for an easy night and you think you're taking a dive, yeah, I will jump all over your fucking head, like. And I said, it was dad now. I said, look, sir, I'll shake your hand. And your brother. I said, if your son beats me, I said, I will shake his hand and you're the governor. Simple as that. I said, when you fight me, you're fighting for a belt. You're fighting to become a governor. And if you ain't got the bottle, like, if you if you think you're just a journeyman to come in to fight me and you're going to take a dive, you can fuck off, like, you know what I mean? And I will jump on your fuck. And of course, fucking, he wouldn't go down, would he? AJ wouldn't go down. I floored him, put him in the corner. And I, he'd had about 30 fights already, like. These boys had had a few fights. And um, the fights before that, he was British champion. He fought the British champion. He was good. He won all the fights before he fought me. Uh, and I, he was a great fighter. But he was a little bit nervous. And I said, AJ, look, if you're going to fuck me about it, you can fuck off, like. I said, because uh, you, you could have to knock me out. I want you to knock me out. And I shook his hand. His brother and his dad was there, like... And I said, who's telling you to take a dive like? I said, tell him to fuck off like. And I went to see J Joey. I went to see you and Ricky English. Look, right, I'm on camera now. Now you can bring them to me and I'll fucking tell you in front of them. You've had a book out. No disrespect. I love you like. All what's happened in the past, I've always kept my mouth shut. And things what's happened, I'll take to my grave like. And I've seen it all like. And you've kept me out of a lot of shit. You know what I mean? And there was one fella, he, he got out of fucking hand, like, he he um he started thinking Roy Shaw, Tina was there, bless the light, I spoke to Tina, I went out with Roy, uh, uh, and uh, Joey was there, and we had a little party, the the back, the, the bloke who'd done the, the train robber was, his son was there, who's the bloke who, who went abroad, he's dead now. Biggs. Biggs, his son was there, the party's for his son, to get money for his dad, and I, I can remember Joey calling me up. And um, the other bloke from up north was there. Was it Bristol? Who's the bloke, the bold-headed bloke? He only looks, he, he, he looks a bit like you. No, he's good looking, mind you. <laughs> you might be better looking. <laughs> My old mate, I think I'm terrible for the names. Bristol? Yeah, he fell out with some fella. No, not Bristol. Um, Newcastle. Newcastle. He's got a bold head like Steve you. Steve Rafe. Steve Rafe was yeah. there. He can Steve, you can tell him this as well, like, you know. And um, 
Steve had been roughed. He'd been roughed up by this gang. They had some bodybuilding. They had, I mean, when we used to throw parties for celebrities, like, and um, Joey's called me straight over, no man! And like, fucking, I was there. I had another bloke with me, Gary, I think his name. Well, he was an old mate. And I fell out with him. It's a shame, really, because Gary, I'm sorry I fell out with you, my old mate. I loved you, like, you know what I mean? And when I fell out with my, my, my second missus, like, he was friends of her, like, he didn't do nothing wrong. He was just loyal, keeping everything in a piece, like. And uh, Gary, Gary, I'm sorry, mate. Contact me. I'd love to see you again. Um, I'm sorry for people I have fallen out with in the past. There's not many. But, um, yeah. Gary Rafe called, uh, no, Gary Rafe was there as well. He'd been roughed up. Joey called me, like, and I had Gary with me. He was a big fella as well, like. And a few of the old boys, like, Norman! Norman! Governor! I oh, come when they called me Governor, I got up, like, yeah. Uh, I used to like being called Governor, like, everyone would look around, like, you know. And these fucking bodybuilders there, and Steve was being roughed. Joey was there, like. Uh, Joey had, he called it his brother, the taller fella. He, he was there. Like, a few little firm was there, like. And I looked at these fucking big body bit, and they were big fuckers, like, you know what I mean? I looked down at Joe, and he had a kitchen knife, like a table knife, in his hand, like. And I thought, fucking hell, Joey, like. So I didn't scream and shout. What I mean when I front people, like, is that you get in their face, like, you look at them, you just barge them, or tread on their toes, like, or give them that snigger, that nasty little thing, like, you know what I mean? That you don't give a fuck. I've been doing the doors all my life, like, so I know what to do, like, you know. And Joey knew it as well, like, you know. And uh, they backed off, uh, and Steve Rafe, bless his soul, like, you know what I mean? What did you say to them? I didn't say nothing. I, I a look. I'm... Just a look. I remember fucking Roy Shaw and Lenny McLean, the look they gave me once. Lenny McLean, a Prince concert, like, you know what I mean? And uh, um, we had trouble with the security there. And obviously the security brought brought Lenny in because, uh, and it, it wasn't just me, it was everyone, like, he just wanted to keep the peace there. And he didn't have to say anything. And it was a stare he gave, like, you know what I mean? As if he wanted to kill everyone, like, you know what I mean? And Roy Shaw, when we buried um, Joey Pohl, the old man Joey Pohl, like, he... Um, he, he was there as well, like, uh, um, when we buried the old man, Joey Pyle, Roy Shaw was there, and he looked at me like a volcano, like he wanted to kill everyone, torture everyone first, then kill them, like, and I'd get in there and I'd, I'd just look at them in the eyes, like, you know what I mean? He won't take them off, and no matter where they move, if their head moves that way, it moves that way with them, or it moves that way with them, like, you know what I mean? And they're with their mates, like, you just look, look, and, and you think, well, it's going to kick off, you, you know, it's just... Someone's going to get hurt, like, you know what I mean? It's not going to be me. And you're waiting for, you. I've learnt now on the doors, like, I won't hurt anyone on the doors unless they, 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 last night I got kicked out the ass, And the doorman stopped someone just, because I'm used to the old, I go from, I keep skipping things all the time, like. I was with, um, uh, um, I, I've got to get back to this because I can't leave this, sorry, Joey Pohl, young Joey Pohl and Ricky English, I can't let this go, like, you know what I mean? I said to you boys, like, no easy fucking fights. I want to fight top boys. And I can remember you with JJ. I was rearing up on you, like. I said, this is a setup. You, you want him to take a dive. Or you're paying for him to take a fucking dive. The poor geezer, like. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, the journeyman to me, I was thick as shit, like. I, I admit I can tell stories, but I'm as thick as shit. And I, all the stories I tell are true. Or, or I might fucking exaggerate a tiny little bit, like. You know, a tiny little bit, or, or you know what I mean? Because I can't remember everything, like. But J uh, JJ, I like JJ. He was a lovely fella. His dad and his brother was there. I shook hands, like. And uh, I, I think he got told to take a dive, and I fucking told him. I went mad at him. And I'll see Joey Paul, and he can't get out of this. Because, Joey, you can come around here with Ricky English, like. The book you read, like. Bless you, I love you to pieces. Fair play to you, like. You know what I mean? But, you know... And the action men you tried to make, you know, you, there was a few more action men you tried to let me fight, like, and I told them to fuck off, come down my, come down here and have the real fight, like, you know what I mean? But um, Joey can't get away, but I read, I remember Joey and Ricky English, and they, 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 they swallowed, they shit it, like, you know what I mean? And that was just before I was getting in the ring. But my cousin, like my nan, my nan used to sit me down as a kid, like, for hours, 
and he used to talk about the wars and this, that, and the other, and what it was like. Like, then he used to have a cup of tea and the uh, the tea leaves and the teas, and she's going wiggle that three times, like you know what I mean. And she's going, well, you're going to get, uh, you're going to Wednesday. She goes, this Wednesday. She says, on the way to town, like, in a car. The car's going to come off the road into the bushes, like. It's going to be a bad one. The car's going to get messed up, like. You're going to be with your brother, like. Oh, fuck off, like. You know what I mean? What's? And I don't know if it's the Jewish in or the gypsy or something. We got a lift. Hitchhike to lift the school on a Wednesday. We hitchhiked, me and Alf, he's a witness, and my brother, he can, now my brother can tell you all about the raves all over the country, we conquered them, we owned them, Sunrise was the big one, like, you know what I mean, but I keep, people keep on about me, I have a book out, and on about my brother, but my brother said, oh, I'm a fucking, he's a funny handshake person, and he like, I don't know, what the fucking, what they call him? Palm ticklers. Something like, no, I, I total respect for them, like, because they, they are, they are, they are the top boys. Like you know what I mean. Hope you're enjoying the podcast. Is worth my sponsor, Beer Fifty Two. Do you fancy a free case of beer? My co-host Jen may have quit alcohol, but you don't have to keep going with Dry January. You can get a case of exceptional beer from my good friends at Beer Fifty Two. Simply go to www.beer52.com forward slash s h a u n Sean. And all you got to pay is a pittance, the postage, $5.95 to claim a free case now. I've been a member of Beer 52 for a while, and I absolutely love it. Each month, they send their members a case of unique and varied beers from a different part of the world. They've also got the Ferment magazine. If you want to study up on breweries, regions, the wonderful world of beer while enjoying a phenomenal selection of fresh and tasty craft ales. Thank you for supporting our sponsor. Link is in the description box below this video on YouTube. Yeah, I was, I was letting him bang me about in the chest and his kicks and everything. And he said, no. He, I said, oh, for fuck's sake, Alex. I said, kick me. I'm telling you to fucking kick me now. Kick me. And um, he was turning around. And, I, I, you know, I'll give Alex, uh, Alex Reed the, 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 the credit, like, about a month or two months down the line, I had a, a gut ache. And uh, I kept looking down. I thought, what was that? And it, it felt like a print of his, his foot where he'd actually kicked me in the gut. Like, yeah. the man fought for a world title. And honestly, mate, he, Alex Reed, he was such a beautiful and kind and lovable person. Like, you know what I mean? And he could have a row. Like, you know what I mean? I know we knock him about cross dressing, but I think everyone cross dresses. I mean, I put a pair of her knickers on once and a stinky pair of tights. I think the woman shit them, whoever was wearing them last. And I have a few blags of it, like, but. Congratulations to Alex Reed on his family as well. And his, oh, his, yeah, his... lovely, mate. Alex, I love you, like. I generally talk about you and I get a few bad people coming back to me and saying, oh, he's. But he, what, he, he, Alex, you was in the army, mate. You could fucking handle yourself, mate. And uh, months later, I could still feel the kicks when you kicked me in the in the belly and that, and the chest and that, like. And the punches are good, like, you know. And he was a decent man, like, a lovely person, like. And I love you to pieces. Total respect to you and your family and everyone out there. I love you all, like, you know what I mean? I ain't got a bad word. Uh, up to today, I've always kept my mouth shut. I let my mouth go about a, a few things, but that's years ago, and it doesn't really matter now. But I've always kept the wall of silence, like. But I want people, now I'm 60, I want people to know the truth, what it was like out there. In the 80s, yeah, people were getting kidnapped and fucking raped uh, and murdered and shot. Uh, uh, Steve Francis got took up the woods and blown away. I really regret that because I wanted him to uh, take the work with me, like. But on the door, it was... Uh, people were getting killed in the door as well. Doormen were getting shot at work, and it was it was crazy. The eighties, everyone and suicidal was bad as well. Towards you, know, it was all the drugs that was going through. Like you know what I mean. And then the steroids coming at the same time, so the, the, the doorman was as mad as the fucking people on the on all the drugs. Like, and you'd watch them to see what drugs. There was one bloke used to try on the used to turn up at a uh, sunrise or out a scouter, and he used to. Tr Paint yourself green like the oak. And you used to hide away in the corners. You'd go past. <laughs> you used to jump out as a fucking oak. Like, yeah. think, oh, my fucking God. Like, you know. But some of the, you, you had to laugh. And I did look after people. I was good with people. I never abused people. 
and even at Caesar's Palace, like I would never take, I'd never, I'd never tax anyone. I'm not saying that was a bad thing. Some of my mates, I've got a bloke up north, with some of my mate, he's uh, one of the biggest tax, uh, he's a tax everyone, like. But that was his business, or or dealers. They, if they were drug dealing, like that was their business. So I didn't agree with it. Now, a lot of things I didn't agree with, like. But the point is, you had to tolerate it or to survive. You couldn't be a goody two shoes. You couldn't grasp people up. You had to keep your mouth shut. You know what I mean? So you'd have to tolerate all this, what was going on. And some of the guys I liked, I didn't like what they were doing. But I got along with them, like, you know what I mean? It was a, still from the 60s and the 50s, and the, it was a wall of silence, like, you know what I mean? I think it's disappeared now completely, like, you know. No, I man, what it's happened gone. with the road rage situation where you went up against a knife and coshes and. Oh, bless them, like, yeah, well, bless them, I'm saying. They could have killed someone, like, it was it was terrible, like. Matt got back to me after that. It was uh, um, one of his mates, what was supposed to, uh, he, he, he was going to be on, uh, he was going to interview him, like, you know what I mean? How did it come about, the situation? I was in the car, I was coming home, I was, I was coming back to Ellsbury, I'd just been down the gym in Wolverton, and uh, I'd been training down there. And uh, a car had overtaken me and got in front and slowed down. And I went to overtake it and it fastened up. Then I went to slow down and it slowed down. And they had me on the other side of the road. And I was going around bends and everything. And I could only a little uh, 1300, might even be an 1100, a uh, little, little uh, escort or something like a little tiny little car. Like, I had a baby seat in the back seat, like, you know what I mean? And I, I think I was blown because if someone come around the other side of the road, it would have been a head-on lot. If they had kids in the car, they would have been killed. It's a shame because <clears throat> one of the fellas, I think it was a driver two weeks later, got in a rage rage, road rage and got killed like, you know what I mean? And his mate, it was Matt Legg's mate. <laughs> Matt Legg was a fantastic, I love Matt Legg to pieces. Like, if there's anyone out there you can trust and... and, and uh, and you want to go and see him box, I think he'd be fighting, he's making a comeback like he's fighting again. It's Matt Legg, he's a lovely geezer, he's a heart of gold, I met him as a kid when he was in prison, like, he was going down, a, like, Steve Francis, down the wrong road, I let a free start, free uh, Steve Francis go, because I was on the, the worst road, you know what I mean, the, the raves, the, 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 all, all, all that stuff, I was the governor at the time, and, um, I thought if he joins me, like, we'll be like the Cray Twins, like, you know what I mean? Because towards the end, wasting someone, beating someone up was part of life. So you did, know what I mean? So did those guys pull over them with the knife and the cosh? Yeah, yeah. I got behind them and they pulled up, they slowed down in front and I slowed down behind and I thought, look, I don't want to get out of here. Like these, you can't fight in cars, can you? Like, especially when you've got a, a little Fiesta, I think it was, 1100 or something. And they had a, a um, they had a fast car, a fucking uh, something special, like you know, a little fucking race car it was. And I thought if I turn off and race the other way, they're going to catch up with me. And um, so I watched them. They got out their cars, and he come out with a blade, and the other one come out. I thought it was a little fucking aerial for car, but it was a special. What can quite? I was stubborn. You you could beat me senses. You could beat me the fucking pieces. And I wouldn't sort of feel, I don't know why, I don't know what it was. I didn't feel a lot of pain like. Um, another one, I can't I forget, I'll, I'll give the story once before. There was one what could punch because he caught me in the forehead a few times. like. And there was three what come out, or four, I think there was four, and one got back in the car and jumped in the car. But they sort of set upon me like. Was there any words exchanged before they set upon you? Well, they were frothing, weren't they, really? Like, but I feared more for myself, like, because I knew what my temp was like, you know what I mean? I was, Jesus, I was down the gym, benching three or four plates, like, yeah, I was and boxing at the same time and doing martial arts, like, and, and um, I, I, uh, I thought, you silly bastards, like, you fucking come to take me on, like, you know what I mean? Did you have to, like, is it just instinctive what you do next, or do you, like, think well, it's just like the doors, like, you know. Every time you come out of a nightclub, those years ago, like, I used to work up London, so uh, I used to uh, um, work all over the place. You don't know if they're going to be there waiting for you, like, so you walk out, like, and uh, and with these lads, like, 
they weren't proper, they weren't drunk either, like, so it was a bit more dangerous. They might have been on a bit of spear or a bit of Charlie, like, and it was their way to intimidate people, like, but they thought, they probably thought it was an old granddad or something, like, or, you know what I mean? Or just a simple person. They they didn't realise they'd fucked with the wrong person, like. And I saw them and I thought, oh, here we go, like, you know. And he's come over with a blade and I, I've just grabbed hold of him, like, and I pulled the blade off him, like, and I threw him on the bonnet of the car. They was, they was beating me at the same time, like, but I didn't take it one at a time, like, you know what I mean? I've been polite. And uh, I stuck the knife, I had the fucking knife, and I was stuck it in his coat. I said, you're going to cut my fucking throat open. You're going to kill me. Look what it does. I ripped his fucking coat right open. His leather coat he had on, like. Ripped it right open, stuck it with his throat. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to frighten the fucking shit out of him, like. You know what I mean? He was over the bonnet of the car. I just threw him over the bonnet of the car. And it's fucking, it feels like a teeth, toothpicks, this fucking thing, where you press a button. It, I had it for years. My kids had it, were playing with it. I had it for fucking years in the boot of the car. I didn't know what it was, a kosh it was or something. But it was like a, an aerial car. <laughs> and um, uh, there was another one called me Good Headshots. So I forgot to put that in, like. Um, what else they have? They had a kosh, yeah, a knife. And one hit in the car, like, I was running around the car after them. So I had the fucking knife and the, I frightened him with a knife. I did because oh, that's fucking, he could have killed. Whoa, you, you know what I mean? It's dangerous. I don't think these boys are real fighters. Like, there was expedition. Expedition, do they call him like? What was, Expeditionist, like. What was there a moment when they realised they'd fucked with the wrong person? Could you see it in their eyes? The bloke that was in the car, shit, he went white. Like, I think he fainted. Like, I'm not, that's Matt's leg. <laughs> Um, yeah. he, he, he fainted he did he did he fainted he didn't even admit that so you know what Matt done with him Matt was a big bruiser I trained up in prison like and he fought the world champions if he comes back now he's he'll be nearly 50 but he'll still be like a top man like and I reckon he'll be back on the scene Matt Leg. total love you to pieces total respect to you do you know I've taught the man to fight in prison. He's done nothing but show me respect. And he, he, he comes over his beautiful girlfriend. I mean, even his wife was beautiful back in the days. We used to go to the box. I used to have my little kids who were probably eight and nine years old. And they used to look at her legs like. I said, stop looking at her legs like. She was beautiful, his ex-wife. They said, but you're looking at his legs. I said, I'm not. I'm just looking at her stockings. <laughs> and Matt was a he, proper gentleman, lovely, like yourselves. Real nice geezer like, you know what I mean? So how did it wrap up, this kosh fight? It's kosh fight. Um, I was chasing around the fucking car. But I had this knife and this this kosh on me. It wasn't like me carrying tools, like. I mean, later in life, I did carry a 12-ball, but that's because the fucking people were being raped and murdered. It was unbelievable. There's nothing really open up like, you know what I mean? What really happened, my brother could open a big a book up with everything what happened, like. But he won't. But he should help. He should open a book up, like, you know what I mean? Let the world let, let the world know what went on. Tony Hay, I mean, as a kid, I used to look after him. He used to have uh, all over the shops, like, arcades, like, fruit machines and everything, like, as, a, as he's still at school, like. Then a professional gambler, like, you know what I mean? And then then then, then the Sunrise. And it just got mental, like. We, we were going to go, he was going to hire a ship. And take it out the sea so we could have a rave on the ship. But I was going, fucking silly cunts will jump off, jump in the sea, won't they? And they'll you'll have half a dozen people dead on your hands. They was talking about taking it to Europe and taking it to America, and it was getting so involved in, and people are disappearing and getting raped. And I mean, the the the, the torture and rape and bumming people was a message sent out to us. I thought that was disgusting, like, you know what I mean? But the boys, I'll get back to the boys in the car, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the bloke locked himself in the car. He locked his mates out? Yeah, he locked his mates out. <laughs> they fucking gonna say He locked his mates out of the car, like. He fucking shit himself. <laughs> I'm looking at him, I... I kill you! I kill you! Yeah! A knife and a cush and all that, like. Yeah! And he's looking at me, and we went white, and... Yeah, he's gone, like. <laughs> it's fucking fainted, like. <laughs> he couldn't open the door, could he? They let his mate sit and they couldn't get away. And I fucking, he was like raw and hardy, honestly. I was chasing him. I couldn't have used it. I wouldn't have used the cosh on the knife on them, like. 
But I, one was good. One kept catching me with headshots, right? But I think I was enjoying it by then, right? And um, they they managed the fuck. He managed. He managed. He, he obviously fucking. He, he woke up somewhere along the line and opened the door and they jumped in the car and fucking took off like. But even when I drove off after. I was worried might they might come back off. So I wanted to frighten the fucking shit out of them. So they like, at least I'd get home to the wife and kids like. They wanted to come out. They wanted to be gangsters. You want to be a gangster. And this is what I say. If you go up London and you want to be the gangsters with the gangsters, you, you, could, you could lose everything. You could lose your home, your life, your, your wife. So think about, you know what I mean? It's not good. It's not all the gangsters. I loved all the gangsters. I've learned off them. And I used to be, but I wasn't never a gangster. I never taxed anyone like, you know what I mean? I never dealt drugs like. All the, it was just money fighting like. The, the, all the fights, the street fights. I used to get paid for the street fights. Uh, I was the governor. I admit that. And they knew that when I, that's why they wanted me up to see this palace because they're already the governor. But when Joey, uh, when, when um, um, Roy Shaw, give me his belt like you know what I mean I loved it like you know what I mean it was great and the belt come from Roy it didn't come from Joey or Ricky English like you know what I mean and if you want to argue about that with JJ and the things I told you there when I pulled you because you shit yourselves I told you like no disrespect I love you all the pieces like but I told you like no fake fights my fights have got to be real and they've got to be top boys and I fucking told you that okay you know that so don't fucking start making silly stories when, when I started joining up with Spartan. I had to get away. The old man Joe who's died, God bless his soul. London had changed. Young Joe done the best to keep it together like. But things are, I think young Joe's in prison now, bless him. It was going that way like, you know what I mean? People were starting the grass on everyone like. It was all falling down. Young Joey, and I was behind Joey. Joey knows it. If you call me tomorrow, young Joey, I'd be there to back you. And you know that as well. Ricky English, I come to you when you was banging trouble. You was in hospital. And you, was, you, you lost. It was terrible what you was going through, mate. I was there for you. I've always been there for the boys. They can phone me up anytime. I'm always there for them. You know what I mean? I've always been loyal. Always kept that wall like. But I'm telling you now, I was the governor when I come up to London. But I won the, 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 the governor's belt in, in the ring with the gloves on like you know what I mean I was a street fighter although I got brought up with my, my dad's boxing club I was novice like every like ABA I used to box for the home county so I could box and my cousin was saying Norman your dad's telling you she used, she used to do the tea, tea leaves as well like Carol and do you know when she died a, a daughter called me around I went to the funeral and everything she said here's the cards I said, what? She said, my mum wants you to read them. I said, I'm not reading those cards. I don't know how to read the cards. She said, your, your mum, my mum wanted you to have the cards, like. And it even showed in the tea leaves. I was holding the belt above my head, like, and Roy Shaw was, you know what I mean? Mm. And she said, you're going to have the free fights and you're going to win them, like, you know what I mean? She said, but don't get involved in the drug. You know, don't get involved in that. She said, it's a message by your dad. Get out there and box. Don't fight because you're messy when you fight. They don't want to see that. And I thought, well, it's a governor's belt. That's what the governor does, isn't it? Jumps all over the places and jumps out the ring and in the ring. And anyone that gets in the ring and challenges him, he fights him the next time round. That's why I used to shout, who's the governor? I'm the governor. Lenny used to shout it. Like, I used to love Lenny. I've got a question about Lenny. What, when, why was he brought in for a dispute between the security firms? Security firms? It was... Um, London, yeah, they wasn't, um, oh, where was it in London now? Um, we'd done the Jackson tour. That was London Arena, wasn't it? The old London, what's it called? It London, what's it called? London, the stadium in London. Stuck, eh? No, not the Stucklands. The old football ground in London. Wembley. And then we'd done Prince, what was a Wembley Arena. Yeah, it was Wembley Arena. And they were good as gold at Wembley Arena, like. I mean, there's thousands of people there. We, I used to sneak in and watch, watch him now and again, Jackson. We used to look after the merchandise, so he used to pay us, like. It was good in the day to say we worked with Jackson, but now they've, they've, they've nutted him off as, I don't know if it's true or not. You know, it's a long story. Yeah, Like Purple Aki, I don't know. You know what I mean? I just, 
I, I'd rather keep people like that away, like, you know what I mean? No disrespect, you know what I mean? But I don't know. It's just one of those things. And Prince was there, and um, the security in Wembley Arena were a bit funny because I had a pass to go anywhere. So I used to look after the merchandise. We was working for Prince. And um, they got a bit funny about that. I had Michael Dick, was a professional boxer from uh, from Owlsbury. He was an old sparring partner. Uh, there was a few guys I used to knock about with. Um, Vic Wright was another one from, from Milton Kings. He was a professional boxer. And I trained up to him for his first professional fight. All the pros, it, it's funny, really. I was a street fighter. I was an ex-amateur boxer. But any good pros there was about, like, I used to get in there and spar. Or they, I've been living here for years. They used to come down and spar with me here. And uh, <clears throat> Michael Dick said, look, you know, if you want to be funny about it, I'll fight you all, like. And I said, Mike, well, there's no need for that. I said to the boys, like, there's no need for this, like, lads. I said, we're allowed to do this. We're allowed to go where we want. I said, I'm not going to be rude to any of you, lads, like. I said, I'm sorry about my mate. But I said, you, you, you know, you can't really stop us, mate. We're doing our job. You're doing your job, like. And they were just put out because we we're outsiders and having the rule of the manor, like, a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of spitefulness got in there, like. But no disrespect to them. And the next night, they, they, they brought Lenny McLean in. And the bloke who, who ripped my book, what was his name now? He was a lovely fella. Lee. Uh, what's his name? Lee Worthley. Lee Worthley. He said, yeah, he said, that's right. He said, I've, I, he ripped some of Lenny's books. Like He said he, he said about that, like, you know what I mean? And he was, he was good as gold. Lenny was fucking a giant, like, a great big geezer. About six foot three, like he looked apart, professional, like I mean, a top doorman, like I would say, you know, unlicensed boxing, like should be they should be a doorman thing with all the doorman, like you know what I mean? Because he was he was king of the doorman. Lenny McLean was king of the doorman, like I've never seen a man what looks more of a intimidating doorman than Lenny McLean, apart from Roy Shaw. They were both there. It's a shame they could have been friends, and it was a shame they weren't friends. Because, I mean, they would have ruled London, like, along with uh, 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 Joe, the old man Joey Pohl and, and uh, Freddie Foreman, like, it, it could have been great, like, you know. But they, they fell out, They're both very proud people. But um, even today, people are talking about them. Anything about Lenny or Roy or on Facebook or YouTube, they, they're, they're into it, like. And they, they, they were legends, like. But... Um, Lenny was there. He looked the bollocks like, and he had a suit on like. He, 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 he uh, it's his hands. I can remember his hands were massive, and I admired him straight away. And I thought, fuck, he must be a professional minder, and he was a professional minder. And if they had trouble in the east, any anywhere in London, if, if they had trouble like, and the boys obviously said, look, the firms come in like. One of the boys was a professional boxer and the other fella was, you know, obviously Norman Buckland or from up north or something. I was in Ellsbury. Ellsbury weren't part of London. It weren't part of up north. It wasn't part of Wales. It wasn't part. It was, Ellsbury was Ellsbury like. I mean, from here we went from Milton Kings weren't even built, built like when I was doing the doors. Next thing they built Milton Kings. We used to go over to Oxford, Buckingham, uh, Tame, uh, Bista, um, all over the place. Then when Milton Kings opened up, I think the first place was the point. The point what was there. And we used to get in the point and work there. Then then we started taking over the Milton Kings. We moved into Milton Kings. Started doing all the pubs and the clubs in Milton Kings. It was great. But I was saying about Lenny McLean. Yeah, he he um I mean, if my old man taught him as a kid the box, if he got brought up and my my dad was there and taught him how to box as a as a kid and he took it really uh, proper, like, I reckon Lenny McLean would have been a good professional boxer, like. I mean, I've got to give him credit, like. A lot of people knock him, like, and, uh, you know, I say, well, come on, like, you know what I mean? He, 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 he didn't get into the game as an amateur boxer or a professional boxer. He was a street fighter. And some of the boys he fought, like Paul Sykes, he was a professional boxer. I mean, his first 10 fights as a pro he won, didn't he? And the point is, a good. F he came out when he was 30 years of age out of prison. You imagine if he if he didn't go to prison and he boxed from the age of 20, like. He, he fought, J is it Jail Gardner? Who did, who did he fight now? Was it an American guy? No, no. He, he put an American bloke in a coma, That's didn't right, he? That's right, yeah. yeah. And after that, he fought... Um, who did he fight? 
he, he fought a, 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 a gardener or something like that, it was called. No, it wasn't gardener, it was a heavyweight. And um, he, he, he lost that fight. But you imagine if in the 20s, and he was, he was right, European champion he was, and he was right number 10 in the country, num, number 10 in the world, like. And he, he, he put up a good fight of him, but he turned his back at the end and walked away. And uh, it was a shame because, I mean, there was Paul Sykes and there was Cliff Fields as well. Like, Cliff was a lovely fella, but it was the drink what finished him off, like. And it was terrible because I used to want to go up and see Cliff, like. He, all, all, Dunstable he used to be. And uh, and the people used to go, you don't want to see him. I said, why not? They said, he's he's on the street. He's like a tramp, like. And Paul Sykes ended up the same, didn't he? Yeah, the kids you know beat I mean? him up. The kids beat him. And the same with, with uh, I was in prison, like, bless I was away in prison. What pr what prison was I in? An I was, open prison. I was going to ask Norman before this story. What were the circumstances that led to you going to prison? Ah, it's all in the book, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta read the book. <laughs> Listen, some people play gangsters and they're not gangsters. Like, like I said, you know, people knock Alex Reed. Like, I'm not a crossdresser. I'll put a pair of knickers over my head, my wife's. But but I'm not knocking them. What they do, they do. Like, you know. But there was this nasty bastard, like, and he was a nasty bastard. I used to do the doors. And when I'd go from one door to another, especially in Ellsbury, he used to come along and cause a dorm and trouble, like, it was, he, he, he and, and uh, we, we, we had the, the rectory where I was working the rectory, like, they called me, I was, I was working the doors over Milton Kings into the rectory, and uh, a mate of mine got beat up really fucking, uh, really, what was his name, darling? He used to mine for Howard Jones. Leroy Dennis. He was a top boy. He was fantastic. In the 70s, like, he, he's muscular. His arms, he's a black fella, like. But everyone loved it. All the girls loved it. A handsome man, like. And uh, a really proper, lovely fella, like. And he'd done Howard Jones and that. He'd come back on the doors and he was at the rectory farm. Uh, and a, a group of lads went up there and they fucking beat him senses with a, an extinguisher and smashed his head. They, and he was never the same. And he, he asked me to go and work with him, like. But instead of me looking after him, he used to look after me. And he was great. We had some great doormen there, like. It was fantastic. But um, one of the doormen, like, I, I, one of the fellas would come up and beat him up. I never, I never forgive him, like. And he used to he, take liberties, right liberties, like. And he used to make out he was a top boy, like. And again, I when I come out of prison, I said sorry to him and patted him on the back, like you know what I mean. He when I went around his house, he he um he wasn't the gangster I thought he was when he came out of his house. I was smashing at his door, like, and I wanted to put the frighteners and maybe shoot him in the foot, like or something like that. Uh, I shouldn't be talking about it, but maybe this is the last interview I'll ever do, so I will. But when he came out of his door, he had a fucking wig on and fucking a nighty. He was a fucking crossdresser. <laughs> oh my god, I couldn't fucking believe it. Like he, he wanted to be Jack the Lad, the gangster, and everything. Like anyway, he shit himself and he fainted. He could actually smell the where he pooed his knickers. Like you know what I mean? He had like a red fuck. Oh this, honestly, mate, these fucking perverts and crossdressers and and fucking and rapists and people going around, they were taking over in the eighties. Like. And I couldn't believe it. And I let the shot go, like, you know what I mean? And as he's gone down, he's shit his knickers, and he had his, his fingernails all painted and his lipstick, and, and I thought, fuck, his wig fell off, like, and he shit his knickers. I ended up flowing, blowing a few of his plant pots away, like, you know what I mean? And his car, like, I was laughing so badly when I left, I shot his fucking car windows out a few times, like. But, no, obviously I got grassed up, like, you know what I mean? But, um... I, I fucking, I, don't, I wouldn't have killed him. He had kids, so I wouldn't have killed him, like, you know what I mean? It, 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 I was just fed up with him, upsetting and beating everyone up, like, he, and fucking hospitalising people. He'd been, he'd been, you know what I mean, with the old Bill, he'd been away for a, a crippling an old uh, a policeman, like, you know what I mean? And I'd, I'd, I've never had no disrespect with the old Bill. I mean, my horses used to get out down my yard, he used to get on the roads, and it was always the old Bill that used to bring the horses back, like, you know what I mean? One was fucking mental. One used to bite, didn't it, and kick and everything, didn't it? This is my wife, Nanette. Come over here, say hello, darling. She's too shy. Filipino. 
<clears throat> my cousins and uh, a few other people tell me told me about her like that I'd meet her, and I thought she was going to be black from Africa. But they said, no, long black hair, like dark complexion. Then I thought she was going to be from um, uh, Thailand. And I went looking for her, but she just come out of the blue. Like, it was in the tea leaves, like just like when I was going to win the, the governor belt. Like, so every fight I had, I knew I was going to win. Like, so they didn't have to tell me anything. So I said, get the hardest boys. That's what I said to Ricky English and Joey Pohl. Give me the good boys. Give me the proper boys. Give me the hard boys. And the boys are good, like, but... I wanted, like, fucking world-class, like, you know, because I knew I was going to win. And that's like Tyson Fury, like, you know what I mean? So after you got snitched out then, how did they catch you? Oh, the 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 the, the police pulled me up in the car, like, I come out with my hands up, like, you know what I mean? I had no, no quarrel with the old Bill, like, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I, I the shoot ride hidden, like, you know what I mean? And... Um, it was under a uh, when when I went to court, they said, "Why is the barrel shot shot off, uh, uh, sawn off the the, the fucking uh, the gun?" I said, "The the fit it into the hole. <laughs> it was too long." And they said, "What do you have the gun for?" I said, "It was an antique." Listen, I it was wrong. Any any youngsters watching this, you know, I went into a stupid thing in the eighties, like, and it was for money. Like, I was illiterate, so I wasn't doing it for fame or fucking anything else like it was for money and I had kids to feed and I was caught up in the wrong sort of thing like I was the governor like early on you know before I become the governor of the ring as well like so you know I've got the belts I still got the belts now do you want to get the belts darling yeah I've got the belt Roy Shaw give me and um Gary Furby Gary Furby I passed the belt down to him but he, the, that was the 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 um, Roy Shaw belt was the, was the governor belt of London, so I had the other belt out to say like this is worldwide like you know what I mean, it can go any country and it can go ever to what you know what I mean, black white Asian whoever it is any country to anyone, and Gary Furby he, he was a good boxer he's yeah we've had him on he was brother. you know he's really underestimated Gary Furby like you know what I mean, and I see him come out and he thought. Some pros, ex-pros, like, you know what I mean? Some top pros, what I've been about for a, a long, long time. And he would stand there and he, he'd, he'd go the full distance with them, like. And uh, that was, that that was he obviously got trained by his uncle, but that was the ability of him, like, this is how, how he could. And some of these even fought for European titles and everything. And he used to get in there. To, and um, that was, here, come and show him, darling. Wow, look at that. That's the one Roy Shaw gave me. And that was Roy Shaw who gave me that. Okay. And this is the Spartan. What oh, grief. It's one come from Spartan. It was a bare knuckle fighting. Wow. I was king of the street with the bare knuckles. That was the governor, me. King of the ring on license. That's the governor, that's me. I'm getting our light in life. So I can tell you the truth and how it was. That's the way it was like. And I've got to thank to everyone like, you know what I mean? Even though I didn't speak to Lenny like, love your pieces like, thank you for, for, for watching you as a kid like, to give me that, you know, I thought, who's going to spit at him? Who's going to swear at him? Who's going to abuse him? Who's going to call him a tramp who walks down the road? You know what I mean? Who's gonna... When I used to sit in Bedgrove School when I used to come back now and again... <laughs> When I used to sit down, is it what? What do they have in the morning? What is assembly? Is it assembly? We all sit down. I used to sit down like, and the dogs used to piss over shit over my clothes like. Rebel used to rip them up as well. It was not a good life, and everyone used to sit two or three foot around me like. You know what I mean? And I remember there was only a couple of Asian girls in the school, and they said, "Why don't you fuck off back to Spain?" <laughs> and I thought, "But I'm, I'm English, like. You know what I mean?" And things like that, like, bless them, they bless them, like, you know what I mean? It, 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 they were lovely girls, like, and I, I have total respect to the Asians. I mean, my daughter's married, to, she's Muslim, like, my grandchildren are Muslim, a lot of my grandchildren, like, and, uh, you know, we come from gypsies and Jews, and, I mean, I think the Irish had got it, had got it worse, because when they discovered America, the first white slaves over there were actually Irish, like they were badly abused. Potato famine. So when when you got arrested, then what was it like fighting your case? 
I, I, I was fucking useless. I couldn't read or write or anything, could I? You know what I mean? Did you have a lawyer friend or anything? Yeah, yeah. My brother had one from London. Like he was, he was, uh, he'd done a bit of time. He'd done a few years with uh, Norman Parker. So uh, he, he had his script as well for his book, uh, the Parker's Tales. Mm. Norman Parker wanted to get out and get him a writer and get him. I think he got him set up for his first book, Norman Parker. Um, I could never understand Norman Parker because he was intelligent. He come from a Jewish family, and he wanted to be a gangster. But you know, it's called gangsteritis. Is it? Is, yeah. Is, is, is yeah. Yeah. I never wanted to be. Oh, I like. I love being with the gangsters. Mm. But I could never tax them on her. I, I was like she says. She says you're like mama, like her mum. I I don't wish no harm to people, and I love everyone. I do love you all, like even the haters. I've tried to get on with, like, but some of them are wrongins, like, and you got to break away from them, like. If you try and help too many people, well, I don't want to go back into depression, like, because I can't hold that weight around me. I can only hurt. I just help the certain people, like, like Cad, you here? Where's Cad? Get him out here. Don't get gangsteritis, folks. Like two Tony said, keep your day jobs. Keep your day jobs. What? This is Cad. Cad, come here, mate. No, 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 no. He don't. He's done 25 years, Cad. What you got to say, Cad? Have I been like a father to you? Yeah, always have. Always will do. We'll go back 20 years, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He come back here. Tell him the state you was in when you come back. Oh. He was bad. He said to me, "Yeah." He said to me, "He's, he's I, I, I used to look after all my kids. Like, my, the wife's are great. I mean, the, the uh, my first wife was Tracy. She was fantastic, a lovely woman, and Amanda. Like, you know what I mean? You go through divorce, but it takes two of you. Like, you know what I mean? I couldn't have been easy to live with. Like, and uh, he stayed. He had a caravan down the bottom. I used to have about twenty or thirty caravans down the bottom." I used to think, he, unbelievable, because my nan used to tell me the money's in property. You must buy property. And when I come out of prison, my dad left me a house in Church Street. And I had another bloke, uh, a Syed, who used to let the rooms out. And I used to go around to it. He said, why don't you do that with your house? So a two or three bedroom, three bedroom, I'm turning into a six bedroom and had three or four caravans outside there. That gave me enough money to buy a, a house in the, the lakes. No, I got given the lakes estate from a dad. I got a house in, in Fishermead. Then from Fishermead, Conabra, I got another house there. I had about five or six. I couldn't even read or write. It was just that the death duty when my dad died, he kept saying, I told you I should have put the houses in your name. <laughs> and I said, Dad, I couldn't take the fucking houses off you. I couldn't mug you off. Bless her. They both died in their early 60s uh, of cancer like. But my dad's wishes was he'd come back to home. I used to live next door in the big house next door. That's where I was. I was rather born in the caravan or in the house, one of the two like. And... um and uh, um, his wishes had come back. He wanted to die, so he died in my bed or up in my room. That night, I had to sleep with him. He was dead, bless him, like. Oh, Jesus, he stunk. I didn't know dead body stunk so much. But the cancer, he wouldn't give in to it, like. It was terrible. He ate my way, and he didn't want to die, like. You know what I mean? And they had to give him an overdose of... He wouldn't take, he wouldn't take the medication, mm. painkillers. They had to give him an overdose of whatever it is to kill him off, like. And it was a shame. My mum as well, her, her last wish, wish was go back to court, like. You know what I mean? She had eight weeks, eight weeks to live, like. So I took her back to court, like. It was terrible. Where was I anyway? Fuck, I'll get carried you're away. On the, you're on the prison years. The on prison, the prison years. years, yeah. Did, was the, did anyone challenge you in prison? Did you have fights? Yeah, I had a few fights. Over what? I, well, I had the wing, didn't I? The wing belonged to me, didn't it? Well, I thought the prison belonged to me, I'll be honest, like. Uh, oh, fuck it. Yeah, I've got to tell you this. We, the screws were my mates. <laughs> <laughs> they were my mates, so they used to look after me, like, you know what I mean? On top of that, like, they knew me from the door so I could keep in control, especially on visits, if it kicked off on visits. They had it filmed as well where I kicked off once, like, and I, would, I wouldn't tolerate any shit, like, you know what I mean? And... uh he couldn't believe that Matt Legman was there because I used to tell him what wing I'd want to go to to talk to so-and-so. And the shooting, and now I was behind. I wanted to get out. I told the boys to come and see me when the five or six of them got shot. It was Tony, Tony Winnick now. He's dead now, bless him. He didn't want to shoot them, like, you know. But he had a, one of them put an axe over his head and uh, nearly killed him, like. 
and uh, I just go to the wings, cross there to sort them out because Tony went to prison. Chalky come in, I think he was involved. Stephen Vil Wilson was in, no, Stephen Wilson involved. Uh, um, Mark Marsh, oh, there's, there's Hodge. The fucking firms were coming in like from Ellsbury. I, you know what I mean? And um, I didn't really get too much. Oh, I hit a screw once, bless him, like. For what? No, he was, he was, and I apologise to you, like, I love the screws. Thanks for looking after me. If you do a bit of time, boys, don't piss the screws off because it's like life. You can't beat the system. Uh, you know, through life and what I've learned, it's been nice to people, show respect and be loyal, like, and don't grasp people up. And try and help people. Reach out. They reach out for you. Don't take it all on, like. But just try and hand a little bit of love and respect back, like. It's like a prison system. You can't beat the prison system. You can't beat the screws. You think you're clever. You're giving them shit in that. I said, you know, when your letters come through or you send letters out, I had Francois from um, two brothers, like. They, they sent a couple of letters out, one to his girlfriend, one to his wife. But what the screws done, they, they sent the, let the letters the one to his girlfriend went to his wife. The one from his wife went to his girlfriend. And they can do all sorts of tricks, like, you know what I mean? And the screws just want a peaceful life. You get some bad boys, like, when some of the screws are bad boys, like. And um, you can't beat the system. It's life. You can't beat life. Just try and be, like, you, you just try and be a gentleman like yourself. The kids, think, like you. the kids think it's all PlayStations and gourmet food. What's the most horrible things you saw in prison? Jesus, that's a, a sugar and hot boiling water in someone's face, yeah. What did that do to the face? It melted his face. It was a YP. I went and spoke to the boy before he'd done it. I knew what was going on, like, and I said, listen, don't do this. What was it over? He said he was a grass. I said, listen, everyone's a fucking grass, like, you know what I mean? I said, well, I said it's stupid, like. And the boy what, what done it... He got put down the block for that, like, and I kicked off for that. He should have put the, and I tried to talk him out of it, but some of them won't listen. I, I met him a few years later, uh, um, and he put sugar and, 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 yeah, boiling water in his face. I got in a few fights, uh, and um, he was down the block, and when I went down the block, he had no mattress on his bed, and his window was open. It was freezing cold, and all he had on was a T-shirt. So I went and see the, the 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 bloke on the wing, the top bloke. And I said, that, I said that's fucking out of order. So he do? He said, well, he put he should. I said, no, he shouldn't have done that. I said, I told him, and I'll give him a telling off. He shouldn't have done that, and I warned him about not doing that. Like, you know what I mean? That's out of order. And I said, but I said the boy's freezing over there. Like, you know what I mean? And I didn't realise they take the mattresses away. I quite liked the block because it was nice and peaceful. Peaceful, over there. yeah. But um. The screws are good as gold with me. They're okay. I didn't give them shit. Like, I hit one of them. I shouldn't have hit him, like, but uh, in the body shot, I dropped him. What did he, he say or do? He was trying to make me, he, he was tr He was peeking me up to, 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 to beat the bench pressing, like, I think 50 kilos, 50 times or something like that. And I wasn't really into it, like, I mean, Matt was up there. There was a few names up there. I did get up there at one stage. I, after a while, I, 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 I apologised to them all. And I thought he was just... You, you're doing bird like it's stressful like you're on remand and he kept egging me like egging me and i thought he was having a pop at me so i'll give him a slap in the belly he says poor old cat. <laughs> i can't show you <laughs> but i generally slap when i'm angry i slap around the face jenny knocks him down but um i slapped him in the belly like a little punch like and he dropped to the floor and he was crawling out in his hands and knees and he, the yellow arm went off and they all come in <laughs> And they were trying to get me banned from the gym, like, and uh, they, 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 I was, I was keeping everything's calm. Well, I was calm in the prison, really. I was telling you, yeah, fucking, these screws, I'm saying they're all good, like. Tomo, you, you bloody screw, you. Yes, Tomo, you. I bought a dog off him when I got on the out, because I knew him before I went to prison, and I knew him in prison, and when I got out. And he showed me the, the fucking mail he had. It was a lot of pit bull, Irish staffle. They said it's a pit bull, really. He had me going like, you know, just like one of the gangsters or or someone fucking mugging me, a traveller with a fucking dog. And he showed me the dog. He said, it's had pups, like, right? you know. So this is the male, the females had pups. He said, do you want one? I said, yeah, yeah, fucking. 
And they, oh, pit bull laugh. Oh, fuck it. I've, I've come across a few before. They, they don't look vicious, but um, when they bite, they hang on like. And I thought, yeah, I'll have one of them like. I thought I'll give 20 quid. I even went around his house and he gave me around his house. He had a beautiful girl, uh, wife at the time, like, and he was screwing in Woodhill Prison. But fucking, <laughs> yeah, I had it. And after a few months, it, it fucking like grew into a zebra. Zebra. It was fucking massive, it was. <laughs> I've, 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 and people were saying to me, they said, do, do, do you use that dog? I said, not really. I said, I don't want it fighting like. They said, no, in races like, you know what I mean? As, as a fucking uh, um, a fucking greyhound. I said, what are you talking about? And I got back to him. I said, the fucking, the dog hasn't, st- it was it was actually, it was a lovely dog. I'll give it to the ex-wife and kids. We called it, um, what do we call it now? Fucking, uh, um, I forget what we called it like. And I fooled him. I said, you can't. I said, he said, no. He said, the father wasn't like, a pit bull like. He said, but the <laughs> the mother was a fucking uh, uh a racing dog, a fucking greyhound, like. Shit. So it's turned out a greyhound. And that was a screwing pigeon, like. And the next thing, something else is happening. He's disappeared over in Spain. Yeah, you. Yeah, I had to pay for it as well. <laughs> and I thought it was a, an Irish bulldog. You know what I mean? A, 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 a pit bull, but it was a fucking a racing dog, wasn't it, like? But it was funny, like, you know what I mean? The people you'd meet in prison as well. You said you had two fights, did you, in prison? No, I had a fight with a screw, like, yeah. I had a fight, I'd, I'd, but it, it, they were quite easy, you know what I mean? They, I'd come off, this is when I got, when I went to Caesar's Palace, I'd been through it all before, like. Maybe I weren't a gangster, maybe I didn't have books out or anything, but I'd seen it all. I'd been there and seen it all, like. So nothing with with Caesar Palace was nothing new, apart from meeting uh, um, the old man Joey Pole, the young Joey Pole was a lovely fella. Ricky English, total respect to you all. Love you to pieces, like, uh, and and uh, Lambrano's were lovely. Um, they were, I mean, but Joey Pole used to bring them over from America, gangsters from America, like like mafia, and you'd be sitting there, like, and you come come and sit with us. I used to feel embarrassed, like, because these 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 like film stars of that like. And he treated me. He treated me good, like you know what I mean. I love him for it, like. Didn't you end up in Harlem yourself? Harlem, yeah. God oh, fucking hell, yeah. I used to go up there. Once we caught a train up there by mistake with my first wife in the middle of the night. But another time it was for the suits. I used to love the Harlem suits. You know what I mean? And I used to go up there, like. Is that from Harlem? That that's from this is from Harlem. Yeah, this is from Harlem. One of my Harlem suits. And I went through there. It's totally black. They're lovely people, like, you know what I mean? And I thought, should I get out, like, because, you know what I mean? On the bus going up there, like, it's, I got out, but as good as gold, like, you know what I mean? And uh, I went in the shop, like, how you doing? And some of them would walk down the street with the suits on, the hats, and everything, like, how you doing, brother? How you doing? I thought, fuck it, I want to be one of them. <laughs> and uh, I was never racist, so it didn't yeah. bother me, like, wearing their suits and that. And um, we went past this shop. I took um, my son up there, Brandon Buster. He was a good fighter. He was a good amateur, and he was a fantastic uh, unlicensed fighter, he was. And I took him up there, and we went past this shop, this thing out, outside stall, and it was like... The blacks were there. He used to hang the blacks like on on out of trees and everything like. And I was taking pictures like. He said, "Don't take pictures, Dad. It's disrespectful." I said, "No. If they put them up here, it's for the world to see like what the cruelty they went through. And they went through a lot of cruelty. And it was there. And it, also the Irish like they went through a lot of cruelty like there was a lot of white slaves over there. And Harlem, you know." It, it, yeah, it, I I liked it there. They, they were lovely, respectful, like the black people there. Like, what about Houdini? But, Houdini, yeah, that was the body punches I used to take. Like, my dad used to warn me about Houdini, the body punches. He said it killed Houdini. I said, how could it kill Houdini? He used to jump in the ice, didn't he? Chained up. <laughs> I said, what was that body get hit when in fucking by a shark or something in the sea? He said, no. He said in, in years like he. When he died, his appendix exploded. It burst because he was holding his breath and everything like. And it's the same what's happened to my solo plex. It's that's right there now. That should go in now and again. I push yeah. it in. It's back out there. And it's uh, he, he, he warned me and warned me and I wouldn't listen. 
and it, it, it's fucking burst. The appendix, uh, the, the soloplex burst, like. But you should listen to you know, your grandparents and your parents at times, like, because if they tell you something, they, they're they old school. They know. They know better, like. I didn't see that in the tea leaves either, or the, the cards. <laughs> and they used to all, always tell, you know, me and my cousin and my grandma was always the tea leaves. She used to read the tea leaves or the cards, like. And I think that's why Tyson Fury, he knows he's on top now, like. When he fought the, the, the that fella, three fights he fought him, who was his name? Dante. Now? Johnny Wild, I thought, how the fuck can anyone beat him from any any well, he just era? Bounced back up, like he hadn't yeah, even yeah. Hit. I yeah. thought, how can anyone? He's going to get knocked out, and I, I was sure he was going to get knocked out, but I wasn't expecting the bounce back up. But he must have seen that in his tea leaves or his card somewhere, like because every fight he had, he knew, and he know he knows he's going to keep winning them. Like he's not only the the, the uh, 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 one of the greatest boxers in England, he, well, world champion. He'll go down in history as being one of the greatest, along with Ali, Mike Tyson. Like, uh, um, we had another Lennox Lewis was fantastic as well. He should get a bit more credit, like. But the Gypsy King now, he's not only a credit to the Gypsies, he's a credit to human beings, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he said the other day, my missus got it, he said, listen to this. And he said, listen, don't ever dis don't, don't ever disrespect your wife. He said, you want to keep one person happy, it's your wife. And that's that's my thing as well. Your best friend's your wife. You sleep with your wife. You tell your wife everything. Be sweet. Be loyal. Don't ever fuck about with your wife. Don't disrespect her, like, don't cut her up. Because, you know what I mean, she could come back at you one day. And, and and And, like, you know what I mean? If you don't... With my two wives before them, like, you know what I mean? I was half decent, so I don't disrespect them, like, you know what I mean? I'm friends with all my ex-wives. Yeah, yeah, I am as well. One comes round, Trace drives me mad, she does. She comes round about the boys all the time, like, and Amanda comes with She don't come in, like, but she's over Milton Kings now. Uh, the last thing I said to her is just remember the good times we had, like, I used to take, she's never been abroad before. I took her to Disney World with the kids. <laughs> then I took her to, uh, from there, we went to New York. From New York, we caught a coach up to, um, what's what's up north there? What's up north? The country, the other country. Canada. Canada, yeah. Niagara Can Falls, all that Niagara stuff. Falls. Yeah, we went to Niagara Falls. A thousand islands. We went now, Hearts Island. Mm -hmm. Then we went into, uh, oh, we went and traveled all around. Toronto. Like, Toronto, yeah. And it was all a co coach trip. Then I took her to, um, it's crazy because I could barely read all right. Yeah, when I used to get depressed, I said, what am I going to do? Uh, you've, everything goes through your mind. Just catch a plane miles away, like, and, and it'd be Cuba, like. I went to Cuba, and it was great, because the Spanish I learned in Spain, I could talk to the Cubans, so I could get on along with the Cubans, like. Or even uh, Thailand or, or all of Africa. And I used to get a plane anywhere. And I used to ask people all the time for direction, what do you do, what do I do here? And I, one time I went to see the missus, she was in... Uh, Nanette, where did you work? Dubai, wasn't it? Dubai, yeah. Dubai. <laughs> I went to Dubai, caught a plane to, well, we had to go somewhere first, then to Dubai. And uh, when I got down, she looked stunning. She looked beautiful. Like, she worked there for the Arabs, like. And uh, I said, how long have you been waiting here? She said, two days or something, like, or two nights or something like that. She said, they let me come early, like. And I thought, oh, bless her, like. And she looked so beautiful, like. And we got a hotel, got a taxi. Taxis are cheap because the petrol is cheap. The oil is cheap over there. And she took me around the the, the tallest building in the world and um, um, the biggest aquarium in the world. And, oh, she took me around. It was beautiful, like, you know what I mean? And she used to work, she used to babysit, like, and teach the kids English. And while she was teaching them English, she's she's practically fluent in her array, uh What's that language you speak, darling? Arabic. She speaks loads of... Wow. She's a simple girl, you wouldn't think, but she's so intelligent, like. And she'd be talking Arabic, and then she would talk uh, in her own language, different dialects, every island we go to, like. And it was it was something else, like. So if you ever get depressed out there, and you feel like Harry Carey or just blowing your head off, get a ticket to America or Africa or Middle East. And go out and see the world, like, 
And that depression will go like, it will disappear. Mind you, when I come back, I caught the wrong plane back <laughs> and ended up in Turkey. And the hours had gone back, so everything was fucked up, wasn't it? Like? <laughs> so you do get on the wrong plane now and again, and you do make mistakes. But I got home eventually, like, you know what I mean? And I've seen a bit of the world. I've been out there, and it's beautiful, like. Philippines is lovely. It reminds me of Spain like it was in the 60s. And they, they all speak a tiny bit of Spanish with the Filipino. What do you say to the young people in Norman, just to finish, who've got gangsteritis? Don't get, don't, please, don't go there, boys. Don't, my mates are, my mates are, I love my mates to pieces. Some of them are, are proper hardy gangsters, like, you know what I mean? Some are not hardy gangsters. Uh, and uh, and uh, the old man, Joey Poe, he was proper, but he never got me involved. And if it's a proper gangster, they'll they'll say no, don't go there. Like you know, even Dave Courtney, like he never got me involved in 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 the dirty things, like the naughty things, like. And he's always been a. I always get a phone call off him. Like I do like Dave. I know he's upset a few people, but if you're going to do business with a gangster, expect you know what I mean. You could get ripped off. You know what I mean. You know you could get your house burnt down and. Worse than that, you know, don't go that way. Like, if you can get a job and you're educated, education's the way forward. Without education, we're nothing like, you know what I mean? Lucky I've got an educated wife, so I've gone on in life. Show her the parrot, darling. Bring the parrot here. So, gangster artist ends in the prison, police, and death. But yeah, yeah, in the prison, like, I left my, my demons behind in the prison, like, you know what I mean? I started going scat scatty towards the end. I don't think it was spirits, like, the evil spirits getting in the head. I think I created a person, like, what I had to become to deal with nasty people. Bring the parrot in, darling. <laughs> Put it on my Oh. Oh. Got the cat here anyway. So Norman, is there anything like you want the viewers to check out, like your book or anything? Matt Leg, yeah. Chat Matt, Matt we'll put, Le we're going to put Matt Leg's channel in the description box below this video. And my mate from up north, he was in trouble that time when Joey called me out. Gabla! Steve Rafe. Steve Rafe, I like. We'll oh, and the Steve. tax man, I like the tax man. Brian as well. Crockerell, we've had him. Brian on. Crockerell, oh, he's lovely. Yeah, and Brian. Yeah. Brian. Even from Aylesbury, I'd have uh, people saying like, "Can you have a word with Brian?" Like. I was going, who is he? He's up north, like, you know what I mean? I said, let me do some homework on him. And uh, I, I watched a couple of his fights. Uh, he was a fucking great amateur, you know? Yeah. He was a good amateur. I don't know why he didn't turn pro. He was like, a, I'm not I'm not telling you, you know what I mean, uh, any porky pies. What I see of him, he was like a Muhammad Ali, like. He's picking cars up, wasn't he, in one of those videos? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's when he went into bodybuilding. Yeah. But I think I think he could have been a legend in the boxing world. Because mm. when I, I sized him up and I thought, I wouldn't like the boxing, like, you know what I mean? He, he, he's he, The fella couldn't touch him. Every time he threw a punch, he just, he was like Muhammad Ali, he just backed off, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Moved about and he was... He was fucking, what a great boxer. And that was, you know what I mean? And I knew in the boxing world, then, uh, then, uh, then, 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 few boys would talk, talk about him. Like, he, he did pick up cars and it was, uh, yeah. And he could take a hiding like me as so, well. So strong. With Lee Duffy as well. So we'd be beating each other up all fucking night, wouldn't we, me and him? <laughs> but it was about, you know, he was, uh, he, he was, uh, I said, no, no. I said, uh, I'll give that one a miss, like, yeah. you know what I mean? I think it was uh, Frankie, Frankie Ross. I was saying about my mate here, like, he, he used to live down the back here. I was just talking about him. He come here and he was fucked. He, he said, Norman, if you turn me away. And I had a house for the kids. I used to look about five or six kids. Mm. I looked at him, like, and he was like a Matt Leg or a Steve Francis, like, he, and I said, I'm chancing it, mate, but I'm telling you now, like, you've you got to come off the shit, like, and for months and months, he was just stuck in his bedroom, like, he's going and taking food him and everything. And uh, he's been with me ever since, like, you know what I mean? That's great. He, he's he even stopped drinking alcohol now. Mm -hmm. He's a lovely geezer, but if you've got a drink in him, like, he want to fight the world, like, you know? Yeah. And I was going, you got, I said, you got kids back up north. You're going to have to start traveling back and thinking about your children now, like, you know? But um, sometimes you take a chance on someone and they pay you back like Matt Legg. They pay you back. And like my mate here, Cad, 
he 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 looks after me. He's good as God. He might that's why Nanette don't mind him. Like mm. she says, like you know what I mean. He's there and he, he looks after you. He looks after the kids as well. Mm. And uh, I give him a chance. And um, it, it's paid me back for the rest of the life, isn't it? Like you know what I mean. Mm. And what a chance to take. I knew if I let him in the door, what what could happen? Like you know what I mean. And I've even had the old Bill like come around there looking for him. I said, no, Cad. I said, you know, he comes and goes. Like they said, well, you know. I said, listen, the, the, the fella comes to the door. Like he, I said, he used to be here years ago. Like and the, he went back to Hartlepool, and um, I said he was a lovely fella. Like you know what I mean. And I said he's come back. And I said if I turned him around, I said he walked from Milton Kings in the soaking rain, like it's about twenty five miles. <laughs> and I said he would be dead, like I said I took a chance. And I said he don't even drink now. You know what I mean? He, he's uh, he's a lovely fella. Like That's sometimes you got to take a chance with people. That's it, isn't it? You got to take a chance. You got to change when, when they're in a bad place. Yeah, yeah. And, and focus yeah, on yeah. the positive qualities yeah. and, and hope it comes out. And that's that's really heartwarming what you've said. I've I've taken a. I mean. Billy Joe, my son's wife, uh, uh, Lisa, she moved up to Liverpool, like, and she was in all sorts of trouble. When I used to work down the Agora in Wolverton, and I took her on, like, and uh, that's how we got Billy Joe come along, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she was in all sorts of trouble, like, and I got attached to her. I shouldn't have got attached to her. I should have just helped her on and moved her on, like, so that was a bonus. I got a kid out of it as well, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But sometimes people people and she is her husband she was in trouble with her husband and he's scared of me and, and you know what i mean and oh it all mixed up and everything and it, it can cause trouble so you gotta you just gotta use your common sense like you know what i mean if it's going to be too much trouble let it go like but you give it a chance and if it works out then it works out but some people like you know i have boys from prison that still come around my house mm -hmm. knock me up there you going all right it was a, a, a one over in uh, Ireland. I forget his name now. He comes, but oh, I had some good friends. He's Australia. He's gone. Uh, um, Charlie, uh, not Charlie Bronson. Charl, no, Charlie Bronson was the the bloke in prison. Charlie, oh, sorry, I can't call him. Was it Charlie Bronson's the one in prison? Wasn't Still he? in yeah. prison, yeah. Yeah, no, he's coming up for 40, 50 yeah. years. Isn't Charlie he? Johnson, Charlie Johnson. Charlie Johnson. He was a great, great welterweight over in Blitzy Worlds. He contacts me now and again, and he could hit. He was like he was like another um, Tyson, Tyson, Mike Tyson. He was like, and I when I used to spy of him, like his dad used to get us down there and it's going, look, go hard on him or go, you know what I mean? They used to get us really having a tear up. He said, you're bringing out the best in him, like, and it was like being hit in the head by a brick, like, you know what I mean? And he used to knock everyone out, but he'd gone up the pub and got in a fight with someone. They, a gang of Northerners pulled the knives out and stabbed him up and caught his liver. <sighs> and uh, yeah, he, he couldn't box again, like, but he's over, I think he's over Australia or, or down... What's the little place called? What a lot of the English New go Zealand. to. New, Ze New Zealand. Yeah. And I wish him all the luck and love in the world. There was a few boys with old sparring partners. Like, there was Mighty Mo Smithers from Bletchley Royals. You know, I totally loved him. Like, he was a lovely fella. Ray Lewis, I think he's gone over there, Australia, New Zealand. He's moved over. Del Brown's still about. Del Brown was a fan. He could have gone a long, long way. And there, there was always the, um, the brothers. Um, Bennett's, Neville Bennett, Barry Bennett, and Derek Bennett. And they were great boxers. Like, I had fantastic. I mean, they all went, uh, I mean, Barry, uh, um, <coughs> Barry was a professional boxer. Ray Lewis was in the ABAs. He always, I don't know if he got to the finals, he always won the ABAs. Daryl Brown was always going, these, these are all ABAs fighters. So I was in with the best when I was sparring, always in with the best boys, like. And when I come out, I used to have the gypsy boys used to come down here. One was only 15 years old, trying to take me in out for three rounds. So, um, and his dad was telling him off. He said, stop trying it. I said, no, let him go, like. I knew he was burning himself out. So I turned it around in the fourth and the fifth, and he said, no more. He just quit, like, you know. <laughs> and uh, I said, how old are you, son? And he was 15 years old. Wow. And his dad had brought him down here to spar with me. And he was quite chuffed with it, like, you know what I mean? And I said, why don't you get down to boxing club? And I had him down uh, um, 
Paddy Duran, he was, the Duran brothers. He had another one, uh, uh, Jimmy and Johnny Duran. And they they were fantastic. But his dad said, I said, why don't you get him through his medical? I said, he'd be a great boy. He said, no, the boys want to travel the world. like them see us. But now they're ones, two of them are over in America and one of them's over in Australia. And they they got loads of work. They've really done well for themselves. Like so, like his dad said, he could have turned pro and lost a few fights, won a few fights, or not made it at all. But they've made it in the business mind. And this is great how the travellers get on in life. You know what I mean? Absolutely fantastic. Like you got to admire them. And a lot of the Asian people come over and they used to take stick in the sixties and seventies, and they they're doing really well for themselves now. And of course, of course, at first of all, it was the Irish. Well, it used to take a lot of shit off the English, like, you know what I mean? And they're all married in, like, and one day it'll be a mixed world. We'll all be, we'll all be tanned up, probably a bit of a tan. You know, it'll be European, Asia, European, Asian, European. Then I think within a few hundred years, maybe 500 years, it will be black, Asian, European. So Europe will be the world mixed in, like, you know what I mean? And I'm sure everything will get better in the world. It'll get easier. We've been doing a bit with Dougie Joyce and Dean Lynch Ward promoting the 3D Fight Club in Manchester. Oh, yeah, I've seen yeah, him, yeah. 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 And you've, 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 not, you've done stuff with the Joyce family over the years, haven't you? Paul Joyce. I've, I went there with Matt for Paul Joyce. That's it, yeah, that was a fight, yeah. wasn't it? Jesus Christ, I felt like jumping in. And I thought, fuck that, they had a crowd there as well. But they're, they're best of friends, Matt Legg and yeah. Paul Joyce. But I was watching him, and, and the bloke is something else, you know. He, he How he didn't become like Tyson Fury, I don't know. And the speed of him for such a big lad. He was only yeah. 19, and he must have been going 20 stone, 21 stone. A good six foot six, he must have been. Yeah. And, and, and the first round, I felt sorry. I felt I wanted to grab his ankle. I know mm. it's cheating, but... Probably the gypsy in me, like, you know what I mean? Mm. Paul Joyce's ankle is he's, he's in the corner, like, to slow him down, like, to <laughs> make him trip or something. But they would have murdered me for it. I know they, they would have done, like, yeah. they would have killed me yeah. for it, like, so I didn't. And I felt sorry for Matt because I brought him into the fight game. Yeah. And he was fighting some good travellers, like, you know what mm. I mean? And this man was a giant of a man, like, so total it. respect to the man, like, yeah. how he's not up there with Mike Tyson, like, but he's another one, like, the family, obviously had businesses I think it was pave pave slabbing and all that stuff just like Paddy Duran with his he wanted his kids to go abroad and do everything they had different roads like one in a million like as a boxer you can make it like I mean it last night was finger bobs some wasn't it like who, who was it now it was last night boxing last night you Eubanks yeah, Jr. Yeah, he got, he got stopped, bless him, really? like, you know what I mean? I thought he was going to be there like his dad, like, but mm. it's a shame boxing can end that way. Mm. It can end nasty, and sometimes you, you can end up drunk, and you, you sometimes you're going to get that, that that gangster, whatever it's called. Gangster like, writers. Gangster writers. So, you know, and a lot of the travellers can see a bigger picture out there, like, you know. But Paul Joyce, I thought, I thought, um, I thought, Jesus Christ. He was only a kid at 19 as well. And I I uh, I wouldn't have liked to box him. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking Matt. Matt could have a row, you know? Yeah. Seriously. And he's such a gentleman as and well. And he's such a lovely. That's what yeah. I see in prison with him, like. And I said, it's not like that out in the world, mate. I said, yeah. I said, where well, do you fancy being gang ranked by a gang of fucking junkies, like, on steroids? I said, that's what's happening out there in the world. I said, look, mix of the gangsters, like, turn a boxer, like, they'll respect you for it, like. Mm. I said, don't become a gangster. But I said, you like me, you like being with them, you feel comfortable with them in the company. I said, that's okay, like, you know. I said, but don't, just be careful, son, like. Because I said, listen, the last fellow, I and, you know, he reached out for my help, ended up getting taken up the woods and shot dead, like. Mm. So I said, I'm, I'm trying to help you. And he listened to everything. And, uh, He's alive now, and I'm grateful, and I'm, I'm over the moon with it. Like he's got a lovely woman, uh, and she, something about her, like she's something spiritual about her, like she picks up on things, and 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 I can just see the beauty in her, like lovely, and she'll just be right with Matt, like I mean his wife and his girlfriends before were beautiful as well, but um, 
you know, it's come later on in life, and now it's his chance to get on in life. I mean, he's doing what you guys are doing, and I wish you guys all the best luck in the world, Thank like. You. And I think he's going to be successful because the bloke I I took him to go and see when he was he was a youngster, he was, he was in all sorts of problems, like he, he 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 his future was disgusting as well, like he had a bad bang bad things coming. So I took him to see a fella off the market, like he, he spoke about him and. Uh, a little while while ago on on camera like and he couldn't believe he said norman he said how does he know about all, all, all what's going to happen like i said he's tipping you off obviously these things are going to happen but you know it's coming mate so you're going to be ready for it like mm -hmm. so be aware he said what really and there was you know he might have even taken his own life but there was people around him what what's going to end up in prison or dead like and he got he got told this and he, he stuck to it. And every time I see him, like, I said, he's still with these people, like, I said, you need to break away, mate. And uh, he couldn't believe what happened, like. But he got told a bit of the future. And he believed what he got. And, and it, it fucking come true as well. What was worse. I mean, I'm no fortune teller. I don't know what's coming wrong. It's just that I, I knew... And this is what I said to him, like, you know what I mean? The people that suffer with depression, they want to commit suicide. Their spirit's out there what will help you. you just got to be guided. You've got to find these spirits and you've got to listen to them. There's bad spirits as well, like, but you just pick up on the good spirits mm -hmm. and hopefully they'll guide you the right way. You've got to remember, like, you got to be kind. You've got to reach out. You've got to just try and be good in life, like, you know what I mean? Go straight. Education's the way forward. With all that, like, you won't go wrong. Becoming a gangster, you're mixing up with the wrong lot, mate. You know what I mean? Especially what's going on in the 80s, what was going on. I was, I was, I was After talking to Freddie Foreman, like, I said, it's changed. <laughs> I said, at least there's a tiny bit of dignity there, even with the craze. You know, they did go off the rockers, like, you know what I mean? But, um, I mean, what Ronnie done, that was his business, his own time, like, you know what I mean? But, you know, he wouldn't go out there and bloody torture and rape and gang rape plucking boys. It's what I mean. It was it was different in the 80s. Like, no disrespect for the craze, like, you know what I mean? Mm. Or, as, or admire them as boxers, like, they were schoolboy champions. That's like ABA champions. Uh, as uh, And they, they were great fighters, like, you know what I mean? They did try and keep the, everything in trim, like, and they did tax people, like, it was a bit naughty. And they'd done some naughty things. But, you know what I mean, they they were a firm from London would stick out from everyone else, like, you know what I mean? And uh, I would like to say in the days, back in the 60s, when I used to go out to London, Spitfield Market, I met your man, was it Ray Hill? Ray Hill. He, I loved him, he was lovely, like. And they, when you can hear the, the big boys gossip like, they would gossip like, and you could hear, see what they're talking about, the craze. But it would go quiet, it's craze, yeah. You know, the craze, yeah. <laughs> and you could you could try and let and I used to try and wig here, wig here, listen to it like go on, fuck off, go on, get out of here. <laughs> and uh, it was great. But that was the respect they had. They were feared. I mean, really feared. And these days people talk about them like they're trash, you know. But even I can remember them when they were feared, like, you know. But I'm not saying what they'd done was wrong. A lot of things they'd done was wrong. But, you know, it's uh Manny Clark was another fellow I was saying about with. You know Manny Clark? Mm -hmm. he, he's still fighting now, he is, Manny Clark. I remember he said to meet me in a pub in in, in uh, Hemel Hempstead. Was it Hemel Hempstead? Yeah. I'm sure he's from Hemel. Yeah, he's from Hemel. And I went in this pub. And can you remember the 70s, the films in the 70s? There was um, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. There oh, was I Angel Eyes. All with my dad. Can you remember Angel Eyes out of it? Angel eyes. You see, you used to have those blue eyes. Blue eyes. You used to stare, didn't they? And the the the, the, the good, the bad, and the the, the ugly at the grave graveyard, where they're all shooting each other yeah. and stuff like that. Anyway, I walked into this pub. He asked me to meet him there, like, and um, this fellow was staring at me, like he was sitting on a stool, like his eyes are like that, like. And I thought, oh, that's a bit spooky, like you know. And I walked in the pub and I sat down, like, and he. Down again, he'd look over like, and I thought, fuck me, what's his problem like? You know what I mean? And he had this stare about him like, and um, Manny come in, he went up to him, talked to him, and come over to me. I said, what's up with your fucking old, there was something with the old boy over there like. He said, no, that's my dad, he thought you'd come in to do him like. Oh. It was um, G um, George Clark, 
Yeah, Manny Clark's dad. Mm. He was a, a big boy from London. He'd just moved down there. And uh, it was great meeting those sort of people, like, you know what I mean? Manny was a good mate. Like, we used to work with Manny. I took him on the tours with me when I used to do groups. He might have been there with the Sunrise or the Raves. I worked over Chesham. What was the big club over in Chesham? Oh, he's going to kill me now because I can't remember the club now, like. But um, Stages, that's it. The big club over Stages. I used to knock about with him a lot. And... Uh, he, um, I think he buried the craze. He didn't have to kill the craze, but he looked after Ronnie Cray's uh, coffin overnight, along with Dave Courtney and everyone, like, you know. But um, the people I've met over the years has been fantastic, in total respect to them, like, you know what I mean? And uh, now I've got a good wife and I'll, I'll sit back. I wouldn't change my life because, you know, I believe if you keep things sweet, like, good things can come. And, you know, sometimes they come late in life. And that's what I've got to tell people, like, you know what I mean? You've got to be patient in life. You might take it up the arse and get slapped all your life and get spat in and kicked, like, you know what I mean? But one day it will turn around, like, you know what I mean? It's terrible because some people are just... Like, my dad was a beautiful man, but he was born to suffer, like. He always, always, you know, hard work, you know what I mean? Working all the time to keep the mortgage on the house. And it was, it was all the hours under the sun he used to work. And it was terrible, like, you know, some people have nothing but bad luck. But you got to still try in life. you still got to be positive and just try and get along, like, you know. Some people don't. They they take it up the arse all their life. Then they the last minute they turn around and just turn evil and nasty and spiteful, like, you know what I mean? And that's where the devil gets hold of you and turns you, like, got to be positive in life. Try and help people and good things will come. But even if it don't, like... The next life it will come like, you know what I mean? We we all got to go to that court in the sky, ain't we? Was it Judgment Day? We all got to go there at the end like, you know? And um, we've got to put our hands up to a few things like, and uh, I used to think, well, my nan used to do the tea leaves, and my, my aunt used to do the tea, well, my cousin used to do the tea leaves. How can they see in the future? How How, how is that possible like? And I wonder if our future's already written out for us. I was inside, and he was a, a a Turkish fella, and he'd he'd kidnapped and killed someone, like you know what I mean? It's Turks, quite nasty, like. And he said he was a lovely fella, and he said he, some of my best friends were lifers, like you know they made a mistake. We were all in there to be punished, like you know what I mean? And uh, it was none of my business, like. And he says I'm getting punished in life now. I did the rest of my life in prison. He said, but when I die, I'll go to hell and get punished again, like. And I was thinking, listen, mate, sometimes your life's already written out. You can't change. It's just that the lucky people realise you can change your life for the better, like. But you just got to hope and pray, like. You've got the spirits there. You've got, you know, you've got that good luck. And it's nice to see successful people. I mean, people like Tyson Fury, like, I think he's great, you know what I mean? And uh, I envy him, but I envy him because he's lovely <laughs> and he's great. <laughs> but um, I couldn't be jealous. I couldn't hate someone because they're rich and famous and all that. You know what I mean? I think they're great because they're rich and famous. Yeah. Film stars. People should everything. encourage people, not be jealous. No, they should encourage people. Like You know what I mean? Put a bit of love out there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Bit of respect. Mm -hmm. It goes a long way. And it don't cost nothing, does it? No. Don't cost nothing at all. Like. Well, Norman, huge thank you for telling us your story. Um, parrot. Can you get the parrot over? I'll get can we, the parrot over. Can we get the parrot over? No. Get the parrot over? If you're watching this, all the links will be no. in the description box. Yeah. You know what? For yeah. Matt Legg's channel, for Norman's book. Also, our sponsor, Coro. 5% discount, true crime. Coro UK. Links are going to be down there as well. We're bringing over the parrot yeah, right man. now. Watch it. Oh, here we go. Look at this beautiful life. bird. Wow. Wow. That's that's going to be a good thumbnail picture, isn't it? <laughs> oh! oh it's gone. What we could do is we could get a picture of you separate separate yeah. with it. Oh. Thanks, Norman. Cheers, Cheers mate. Yeah. Thank you. It's Cheers. been lovely, gents. Yeah. yeah, thank you.
Chet Sandu's book is finally available worldwide on Amazon. He's one of our most viral podcast guests ever. The book is called Self Made, Juice Paid, an Asian kid who became an international drug smuggling gangster. Do you want to read some of the back, Jen? Yeah, go the blurb. In 1999, Chet Sandu was arrested at gunpoint in Alicante Airport for smuggling the largest quantity of illicit pharmaceutical drugs in Spanish history. Interesting. Overnight, he went from living in the shadows of the Costa del Crimes underworld to being labelled a notorious supervillain in the international press. Incarcerated alongside murderers, rapists, and terrorists in a super maximum security wing. He had to navigate a world of murderous knife fights, prison breaks, drug taking, and high stake power plays. Good bedtime read. In Self Made Jews Paid, learn how a British born Asian kid with disabilities raised in a corner shop emerged as a protector of his family from racist thieves and hooligans. Be prepared to be entertained, informed and offended by Chet's no-holes-barred account of raves, drugs, bodybuilding, entering the fashion industry. Did you know that he dated Kylie Minogue and Naomi yes. Campbell? <laughs> Latest interview. Working the doors and life in one of the world's deadliest places to be incarcerated. If you enjoyed Chet's podcast series with us, there's a lot more detail in the book. Check it out. Worldwide on Amazon, ebook, paperback, and audiobook.